Ah, Fantasy Minecraft. A mod pack that gave exactly what it promised. From souls-like bosses and weaponry to beautiful realms with floating islands, this pack has it all. With many quests to keep you busy in your adventure, you'll never rest a second. The Titan system allows you to hunt incredible bosses in different dimensions. And some of these include the Void Blossom, the Night Lich, the Old Champion Remains, Frenzied Shade, the Returning Knight, the Decaying King, and the Eye. Once you obtain any of the many elytras, you can start exploring the dimensions even deeper. And oh boy, are these dimensions sick. The nether is upgraded and contains many new structures. The end looks like pure magic, it is cosmically gorgeous. The aether adds serenity and peace in your travels. The prison quarters take you back to reality and a nasty boss awaits you there. Eden Ring is still a pure mystery to me. In the deeper dark you can find many skulk biomes and they still give me the creeps. One big part of this mod pack is Call of Cthulhu that adds a mysterious series of crafting items and power systems. This is the true end game I feel like. So maybe this is an idea for 200 days, hmm? If all of this is not enough to conquer your adventurous spirit, then I've got one more surprise laying around the corner. The Souls-like Weaponry. You can wield Kratos' axe, Thor's hammer, spears that shoot lightning, the moon blade from Bloodborne, and a giant hammer that makes a bell sound when you smash the ground. I mean, if this isn't awesome, I do not know what is. All of this and much more is what Fantasy Minecraft is all about. I won't spoil the rest of the mod pack because I honestly feel like you guys should really go out and play this pack. It was an absolute blast. So before you go out and play this pack, please like and subscribe, drop a comment below and tell me how far you got into this mod pack. I want to see day 100s in the chat. We only club 100, baby. All right, guys, pretty cool announcement. We're doing a giveaway of four 20 euro Steam cards. Celebrating one year of doing YouTube, I wanted to give back to you guys. Getting in is very easy. Just be subscribed, like the video, and join this mod pack's Discord. Get level three in the Discord and join the giveaway event in the Discord. Winners will be announced one week after the giveaway starts. To sign up, go to the link in the description to find the Discord. All right, I hope to see you guys there. And now let's go back to the video. This mod pack wasn't easy. My plan didn't go as planned because in the beginning, this was a really painful mod pack. I died quite a few times and I died quite far into the mod pack. So I compiled my greatest moments Let's take a look at them before we jump straight into the 100 days. Let's go. I was just mining and minding my own business when I saw this. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Yeah. This was not good. This thing chased me all over the place. And eventually became my end. After that I found some lions laying around in the overworld. And I thought it would be a good idea to claim some loot. Yeah, spoilers, this wasn't a good idea. After that I found a witch encampment. Oh yeah, a witch castle. Are you sure about that? Inside I realized very quickly that this was not a place I should be at 
at the stage I was at on day two. This was definitely not a good idea. <laughs> then I found this cool base. Enemy spotted. I wanted to get in. This place had other plans though. It had very, very different plans than letting me inside. Very different. So after all of those mishaps, I thought I could finally make it on the next run. I was on day 30. Just flying around, minding my own business, looking for some bosses to kill. I was feeling confident which I really shouldn't have been and uh, yeah I thought I was gonna have a good time with this old champion remains and everything was going pretty good I killed him and I did not see the shade spawning that's when it happened a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven all right we're in look at all of these deaths that I've already had certainty of death small chance of success yeah exactly what are we waiting for waiting for this world to load come on let's go I'm ready all right new world we are going to make this the final adventure We put it on Seed of Final Adventure. And we put it in Hardcore, of course, baby. Let's go. Death is lighter than a feather. Man, this game's playing with me. All right, so we got to choose our origin. Now, I'm kind of wanting to run Elf, but I'm just not 100% sure about this one yet. So they have a high natural talent for magic, arcane skills better, um dark vision and being slimmer so it's pretty cool elf is like you could do a hybrid of like range damage and you could do magic damage so elves are uh, it's like the perfect rogue magic rogue build but half elf has less downsides and then dragonborn's pretty cool and dwarf is also pretty cool and oh my god i don't know what to choose all right after checking it out for a long time i decided to go with half elf so it's pretty good because we get to choose a couple of different traits so i get more experience i will also take the healing for me is increased by 20 percent so we get 20 percent more experience and 20 percent more healing and there we go we spawned in it is day one we are fresh to go look at this beautiful world oh as well as you see i get hero of the village that is because i'm an elf all right i first started by claiming all of my starting quests which give me a really funny hat a lot of books some food and then we are good to go now i spawned right on this giant village which is pretty crazy if you ask me i wanted to first secure some loot so i wanted to find some wood as i do here and I wanted to find a couple of blacksmiths because they would have iron, they would have tools and armor and we could get a jump start in this world. Now, as you saw in the beginning of the video, I died on day 30, so I have a little bit of experience with this mod pack. So I know I need to observe a guard in order to complete a quest. And this guy was stuck on a chest, so he was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I also claimed some of the levels because this will accelerate my growth incredibly. 
I also placed down my medium reward chest and it chucked out a diamond, which is really good because one of the quests is get a diamond. And when you get a diamond, you get another treasure chest. So with the second treasure chest, I just let it pop. Such a satisfying sound. I also made an iron pickaxe, I made an iron sword and an iron axe. I made some basic armor and I found some enchanted books. This was a solid start of the mod pack. I was feeling good about this one. I also secured some iron pantaloons and we were almost in full iron armor. This was pretty crazy. I also got some boots of swiftness. I then checked out my map and I saw that there was a giant snow mountain next to me. Now snow is dangerous, you can get stuck in it, so I was not going there. I looted up quite some extra chests and I named this village Giant Village on my map. It was time for exploration. We were going out in the wild world. And oh boy, this world is wild. So first I wanted to get some experience and mine some coal. This was going to get me some extra levels in order to increase my stats. Now in this stats tab you can see that you have many different stats and each stat does something different. We've got health, damage, swiftness, resistance, hunger, luck, archery, trading, blacksmithing, mining, farming and alchemy. Now every stat has 20 levels and some of the stats like your, your vitality and your damage Vitality and Strength, what am I saying? Those stats can be upgraded. So once you reach level 20, you can ascend in those stats. It's also in the quest book, which is really sick. I then placed my bed down because it had been a very packed first day and we needed to get on the boat ASAP in order to cover some extra ground. That portal you see right there is pretty cool because that is a mind cells portal. Now, this portal leads to a new dimension called the Prison Quarters. In the Prison Quarters, you can find a certain type of vine that leads to a boss. But we have to dive deeper and go to an even deeper dimension within the Prison Quarters in order to get that vine. But the mobs in this place are dangerous, so we were not going in there just yet. I also found a much better helmet. Olivia's helmet is pretty much the stats of a diamond helmet, so that was good. I also found a spawner and you know what that means that means experience oh look at that nostalgia ah whoever played skyrim back in the day will know how that feels i added some extra levels into my vitality which gives me more health i am already above 10 hearts right now. and i submitted some food for the basic storyline quests there is a quest storyline. Now, I don't really take that quest storyline too serious because, you know, I have a severe case of ADHD, so I get distracted. And, ooh, look at that, I got a magic sword. Frost Overdrive. This thing performs Nova dealing 1.2 to 1.8 frost damage to enemies around you and giving them a slowness buff. So, I wanted to test it out. And I gave these crabs some frostbite, which was pretty funny. Oh, it even happens when I hit enemies. It also does a Nova. I mined some extra spawners. And I leveled up again, baby. Woohoo! I then looted up this submerged portal. And I got some obsidian. And I needed to place my bed down because day two had already come to a close. Oh yeah, we are moving fast in this mod pack. The next day I was exploring the overworld because we were not going to any other dimension yet and I got ambushed by a pillager. Now this guy was meaning business. I did have ve a very fast attack speed and I had a wolf by my side. I then found this really weird tower and I didn't think that much of it but I really should have thought this through because there is a witch who wants to kill me a Vindicator who almost one-shots me. And oh my god, I am on half a heart. What is this? Alright, I need to dip. I spawned some alpacas and some wolves. This creeper almost decided to ruin my mod pack for me. My alpaca killed my own wolf. What is going on? And there is vexes all around this tower. So I killed some of the vexes. I spawned another wolf. And I wanted to kill this 
this guy, but I'm not getting anywhere close. And oh my god, these vexes. They almost killed me again. I just wanted to get to that chest that's in the back of the room. I feel like it has some good gear. So I build up a little pillar, and I wanted to loot the chest like this. But the guy saw me, and he spawned more vexes. And oh my god, there's a diamond chest blade in there. I need that. Okay, place the bed down. Get to sleep. Recover some health. Get the chest plate and then get out. That's the plan. Get the chest plate and get out. The alpacas are taking care of the vexes. Or maybe not. And I took the chest plate, took the diamond sword, and I dipped. We got the spoils of war. I then equipped the diamond chest plate, which was a. Why? Well, it was a good upgrade. But I decided to keep using the frost spell blade. I like it. Like, uh. Like having an ability on the sword, even if it does less damage, it's pretty cool. I also mined some obsidian. And I found another mind cells portal. But I wasn't really feeling it. I didn't want to go in just yet. I was still too scared. I also found that tower, but that looked like bad news. And I saw an evoker, so I just... Nah, I just dipped. I wanted to find a place to set up my base and I actually found one of the structures that are pre-generated that I like the most in this mod pack. It's like this serenity house place with like three spheres and then the middle sphere and it just looks nice. So I decided I'll make this my home for the next 100 hardcore days. I placed my bed down and this was officially my home now. I also started the chest monster, which wouldn't take too long before I use some inventory mods. Don't worry, I've gotten smarter over the past couple of mod packs. In the beginning you were all screaming at me, especially that one guy, I still remember him, I'll put his comment on the screen. And it was already starting to turn to nighttime. Look at that, my shaders pack just glitched and it was instantly night. I replanted some of the trees that I chopped down and I checked out what I got for making a full iron set and it was steak. I got a crap ton of steak. And I upgraded my health so we are on level 9 out of 20 baby. We got some extra levels as well and I went to bed. Set my respawn point even though we're never gonna respawn because we're never gonna die. Ooh. Okay, yeah, maybe I just jinxed it now, but I have to say we gotta keep being positive in this mod pack. I then started one of the funnest things that I always like to do, I cannot live without it, and that is an automated smelter. I just put in my fuel, I put in all of the things I need to smelt, and then it just smelts it for me in the chest. I needed to really work on the inventory sorting mod, but I needed a couple of things for it. I needed to go to the nether, I needed an ender pearl, and I needed to not die by this furniture. God, these these chest monsters are insane. They deal so much damage. Are fucking phantoms everywhere? What is this? I yeah, strange biomes. Exactly, Minecraft. You 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 know what I'm feeling. So I got to the Incendium, which is a more challenging and more rewarding place in the Nether. I don't like this. I'm on hardcore. Why would I do this to myself? Play high stakes, we'll get high rewards. I'm sure of that. I needed to make way for a staircase ASAP because if I need to run back to my portal fast, I need to cover ground easy. I also found some Hellfire Mantle, apparently. I'm not sure what that does. And yeah, of course, the terrible forest. I then found a fiery Asmongold. And I'm not sure if I could trade anything, but the guy was selling Protection 5, which is, yeah, much better. It cannot get. I then found some Stormix Ore, which is, in my opinion, one of the coolest metals in this mod pack. You'll see later when I look up some recipes that this, these ingots and these um, tools and armor, it looks insane. Absolutely insane. You'll see it later. First, I had to deal with this mad dog that was attacking me, but I had the high ground. And he stood no chance. I broke into the nether fortress and it was time to loot. Oh shit, I already got an eye. If you don't know what these eyes are, you need 12 different eyes generated all around the world or crafted in order to activate the stronghold end portal. 
This is from the Better Stronghold mod pack and it adds a new type of stronghold in the game. I'll struggle with it a lot later for finding eyes, don't worry about it. I will have some trouble with it. I took care of this skeleton and I finally found some nether quartz ore. This was pretty sick. Nether quartz ore gives a lot of experience so I was able to upgrade my vitality to level 11. And I found some more stormix which was big, really big. This had been a really good run to the nether. I dipped, I wanted to get out ASAP to start working on my inventory problems and I went to bed first because sleep is king and you're a king so like and subscribe, you know that I want it. Back in the overworld we were starting to work towards some of these metals. I submitted the storm mix, claimed the quest and got some extra storm mix as well as raw Midas gold. Now, raw Midas gold wasn't that much interesting, but just look at this. Look at how this armor set looks like. It is so sick. The hole looks like a scythe. I mean, come on. It cannot get any better than that. I claimed some of the quests for going to the nether, and I got an obsidian skull. Now, this thing is king. It's peak. This obsidian skull makes it so that if I take fire damage, I will be immune to fire damage for the next half a minute. I went inside the mines because I needed to do a lot of mining. I got some iron, some more kite, I got attacked by furniture again, some more iron, copper, we were getting the zinc as well, we were getting everything. I wanted to raid this whole place, quadrillium, never heard of it, don't know what it is, but let's go. Some more iron. And I found some platinum, and platinum looks nice. I really like that purple look. I got some verglass ore, which is false water apparently, and alurite. Al I'm not sure what alurite is, but it looked pretty cool, and it was a giant cluster. Mithril gave me another achievement, so I know that's a really good ore. I need to make some stuff with that. And I found my Asmon gold. This guy was trading up a lot of ores, dude. Come on, look at this. I trade him one iron ore and I get two ingots in return. I'm doubling all of my gains. Oh, I love these guys. I also got some lapis because look at that. We got 46 levels and I wanted to start enchanting soon. And we leveled up the vitality because vitality is the most important one for this, guys. We need health in order to stay alive. That is the game, staying alive 100 days in hardcore Minecraft. I also found some Oricalum, and now I really think I'm playing Skyrim. I also found an Ender Pearl. This was the first Ender Pearl that I found, and this is what makes the good stuff. I also got Karmot, and Karmot, you will see in the future, is a really cool ore. It gives fortune, literally gives fortune. From day 8 to 10, I did the mining, and it was finally time to go back upstairs and see some sunlight. My guy was dying for some sunlight. It took a while to get up because I was really deep. But after a little while, I found some dirt and I knew I was close. Look at that. Some, some daylight. My goodness. And I was only about 150 blocks away from my house, which was really nice. I needed to claim a ton of quests for the skull and the ultimate minor quests. I needed to submit all of my materials and I got a ton of materials in return, which is very nice. That is very nice. After claiming a ton of my quests, I wanted to get started. I wanted to get started on sorting my inventory problem because we needed to make an inventory detector and pretty much what that does is that we can connect a ton of chests together in one interface which is pretty insane but before i did that i made three more hoppers and a couple more chests and i wanted to set up an automated smelter for the blast furnace because i can smelt normal items and if i have a second auto smelter that smelts my ores for me then i am in a luxury position this is gonna be a pure luxury base if you know what i'm saying so I put in all of my raw ores and that thing could just smell away. It's gonna take some time because there is quite a few ores, but it can just do its thing, let it run in the background, chill, take a drink. Talking about a drink, hydration check. Have you drank enough water yet today? I bet you didn't. 
Go drink some water. Go hydrate your body. I needed to claim some extra wood. And then I could finally make my inventory connector. Holy! It was day 9 or 10. And we were finally able to get our inventory system in place. The Stormix axe, however, was worse than an iron axe. So I skipped on making that one for now. Also, you can upgrade your chests using rare materials in order to get bigger chests because look how big that one single chest is. And it was time to sort over all of my items. So I did a couple of runs where I took out all the items from my chest monster and I put them all inside of the connected chest. Now, the inventory connector works as follows. Every time I hook up a chest to a chest that is connected to the inventory connector, it is all connected in one frame. So, whatever I place on that level that is touching a chest or the inventory connector will all become one big chest. Now, later I can put on a, how do you say, like an interface on top of the inventory connector and then I can use that to have a crafting table inside of it and have an overview of all my items and have a search function. So that is something we really got to work towards because we were going on to day 11. I enjoyed some peaceful scenery inside my base and I wanted to sort my chest a little bit because it was starting to become a total mess. In the meantime, I also upgraded some of my gear using the enchanted books and we went back to the nether. All right, inside of hell, I got immediately attacked by this wither skeleton, but I had a bow and a sword, and this guy got three tapped. Easy. I also needed to mine some blackstone in order to increase the stairs, and for some crafting recipes later down the road. And then I got attacked by a phantom. Look at this thing. It just went straight from my head. The wither skeleton was also trying to kill me, but we were starting to get stacked. We had protection three on the diamond chest plate, and I had the bow and the sword, so it was good. We're going Club 100, baby! 100 days of hardcore, we'll survive. Don't worry about it. I bridged over to some glowstone because we desperately needed that for the interface. Oh, and it sounds so satisfying when you break that glowstone. I mined up some extra lapis lazuli and some Midas gold, and I went back to the overworld. Back in the overworld, I needed to get some redstone, I needed to make a redstone repeater, and some crafting tables, and I also... Oh, I needed a second redstone repeater. Glowstone, glass, and a chest. Alright, pretty easy to make. The only thing I needed was some sand for that one glass piece. And back in my base, I chucked it in the smelter and I let it do its thing. Meantime, I also went to bed. Because it was day 12! And we were starting to get our interface. We could make it now. It's easy. It's awesome. Look at this. Hop, interface. Boom. I also wanted to make the crafting interface, but I needed four crafting tables and some diamonds. And when you make this, you can also craft in your interface. So I just chucked that bitch on top and look at this beautiful site. I can scroll in my terminal, I can do some crafting, everything is nice and clean. I also wanted to make a smoker so I could put it inside of my smelting room, but I didn't have the items for it, so I skipped on that idea. In the meantime, I also made an Abyss Watcher and I wanted to make some more Waystones. Now, I did not have any Obsidian, so that was very nice. I then checked out where the closest lava was on the overworld, like on the top layer, and I found some laying around. So, we started exploring with my water bucket in order to get some lava. Meantime, I killed some of the local wildlife because I needed nourishment. Talking about nourishment, have you eaten enough today? I really hope you did. I placed down the water and I got some obsidian and we were ready to go. This was going to give me one waystone. Now I needed to fix my obsidian problem in the future so I wouldn't have to go and run around the world. But we'll get to that later. For now I got the obsidian and I needed to make the waystone. So we took one waystone and it was time. I finally put a waystone in my house. This was officially my home and the start of something great. I made a backpack as well because that is absolutely essential in this mod pack. I upgraded it to a gold backpack and an iron backpack and this thing was looking pretty nifty. I mean, look at that. We got three rows of extra inventory space. It's absolutely banger. 
I wanted to explore to the giant village because I, I read online that there is a very, very broken system where you get a Fletcher and you can trade a bunch of sticks for a bunch of emeralds. And of course, I needed to get mending, a mending villager. Because mending is what makes, well, it makes, makes life easy, you know what I'm saying? So I got some flint and steel, I got an extra ender pearl, an emerald, and some stone. And I needed to get one more obsidian. But that was not going to be a problem because on the way, we'd find some lava. So I made a sleeping bag, I took my bucket of water with me, the slime ball I chucked in my inventory because yeah, we, we don't need that. And we started exploring. The sun was setting really fast so we needed to make haste. It was quite the walk and hey look at that, it's my old buddy, the evoker. And he was standing on top which was prime target for sniping, look at that. I just knocked him off. I was hoping that he died from the fall but that was not true. But a couple bow shots later and this guy was down for the count. He dropped a weird weapon though. He dropped, he also dropped Totem of Undying, that's pretty good. I mean, we definitely equipped that instantly. But this trident is supposed to do things to mobs, but I really didn't understand any of it. So for now, I just, I just started stabbing people with it. Inside the tower were a ton, a ton of spawners. So I wanted to make way and just make sure that I get every single one of them because they give so much experience. I leveled up three times while I was in that tower. I also looted up the enchanted books that were on top and I got the enchanting table. And some bookshelves, that was pretty good. It was already starting to get deep into the night so I placed down my sleeping bag and I went to sleep. Alright, I upgraded my, my health and we ascended in my health. Now if you ascend you can claim a quest, claim some extra points and you unlock the quests in order to further advance your health. So now I need to take like five or six thousand damage and then I'll get an extra heart. It's wild. I needed to gather up a little bit of wood because I wanted to make a boat. Now this boat was going to make me go really fast across the water. I mean, you all know how a boat works. And look at that. Just like that, we were exploring towards the giant village. Also, next to the water, I found another lava pool. So, I claimed another obsidian. This was big stuff because I needed to put a waystone inside of that giant village. Because it seemed like it didn't have it. I also mined up some coal to refuel my smeltery at home. And I claimed a ton of bookshelves. Because we needed to make an enchanting table covered with bookshelves. And we needed to make a spell table also surrounded by bookshelves. So you need double the amount of bookshelves. I had some trouble making my waystone because apparently I had taken out some weird type of stone that was not bricks yet. Um, yeah, and I took a little too less with me. So after fixing that issue, I wanted to chuck down the waystone in the absolute middle of this center of the village. And just like that, we got our waystone. So we could easily teleport from and back to this giant village. I claimed a little bit more bookshelves. And in the meantime, I also looted up all of the wood that was inside of the chests. Then it was time to return home. And back at home, I stored away most of the stuff in my interface. Um, but before that, I completely lost my way. I, I, I did, yeah. Yeah, don't, don't worry about it. I completely forgot where my bed was. I cleaned up the extra area that I still had in my base and I was gonna make this the enchanting room. Now I wanted to set up an enchanting table that was fully covered with bookshelves and across from it I wanted to set up the spell table. So I decorated it a little bit nicely and I went to my smeltery to get some of the food that I was smelting. I took out all of the lapis and some books and I was unable to make the spell table. So apparently I had never gotten diorite yet and also amethyst. It seems like I did not go to an amethyst geode yet. I did upgrade to a Stormix axe because it just looks really cool. And I made a Stormix chest. I mean, come on, look at this chest. It changes color, man. It's, it's just so cool, come on. So I placed the chest next to my enchanting table and I some enchantments or you refresh. At some point you can get an eye, which was absolutely amazing. Look at that. That's sick. 
After that, I realized that you needed to make Kyber and you could upgrade Kyber with Karma. And look at that, it has inherent fortune and the armor has a five health shield it gives you. So this was a big upgrade to my gear. And I was hoping if we enchant the pickaxe we could get some extra fortune, you know what I'm saying? No, what I'm saying that's sufficient. Oh my god, it's fortune three. Holy shit. Okay, so we pretty much got fortune four right now. Okay. Okay. This is pretty cool. I went to bed with a good feeling. Things were starting to look up. After all of my deaths in the past, I finally got a world where I'm doing good. I'm striving. Okay, we needed to work towards the magic in this mod pack. So I started the quest line of wizardry. And I made a quick stop in the mine because I wanted to test out this fortune and look at that. Two emerald ore gave me 10 emeralds and four gold ore gave me 10 gold. It was crazy. I almost got blown up, look at that, but it doesn't even bother me. We're doing good. Club 100, baby. I started mining up everything that I could see because pretty much everything you could use fortune on, which was insane. And I found some diamonds. I got nine diamonds from one ore. <laughs> This is so wild. I also got Runite. And what is this? Unobtainium? What the hell? Why does it take so long to mine? Wait, would it be possible that I couldn't mine this with this pick? Ah. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. Okay. Let's not talk about that. That's uh, that is not a gamer move. I'm just going to continue on mining and we're going to completely forget about that. I upgraded my strength and we were continuing in the mines. I now wanted to work a little bit on the obsidian problem because I had an efficiency 5 pickaxe, so I mined one obsidian. And I found another Asmongold, look at that. I just did some trading and I got a ton of copper, a ton of gold, a ton of iron. Just, just look at that, it, it also gives so much experience. It's amazing. All right, I have found some extra Orichalum and this new weird Adamantine. And Adamantine is actually a pretty good ore because you need palladium, adamantine, or callum, and unobtainium in order to make the metallurgium. And in this case, I actually found some more unobtainium, which was really, really good. I took out a gold diamond pickaxe, not a gold one, diamond one, and I mined it. I also claimed the quest for unobtainium, and I got a second unobtainium. So right now, we were pretty much able to make two metallurgium, which is an incredibly strong metal. But we needed to make a trip to the nether before that. So first I set up a furnace and a crafting table, and I wanted to make a little hub in the mines so I could easily go back and forth. Now there was a chest, and I wanted to check out if the chest had any good loot, but first I put some deep slate cobblestone in the furnace, because I still needed to make, well, of course, the waystone. And I wanted to open the chest. Of, of course. Of course it's another fucking mimic. Oh my goodness. What are these things? Where did it come from? Leave me alone. I did kill him. He was starting to get scared of me because this guy was running away. This guy was running away. Can't believe it. And I finally finished the waste zone. I put it down and I called it my mine. Because we were going to go quite a few times to the mine because this metallurgium stuff man when you see the stats you're gonna be absolutely surprised it is so good it was already nighttime so we went to bed and we were already halfway to day 20. the days were moving fast but i was moving faster okay we needed to get an alloy forge in order to make the metallurgium so like i said we need adamantine we need mithril or callum palladium and unobtainium so i've got all of the resources and look at these stats 12 armor 12 armor i'm telling you 12 goddamn armor points it is wild that stuff is going to make us not die and i like the sound of not dying in hardcore i mean you know what i'm saying right so i also upgraded my backpack to a bejeweled backpack it was very nice but the problem being that i couldn't upgrade it any further because i needed a nether star and soul sand or for netherite and a magma blocks so we were quite a far ways from making that one. But we got an additional row in our backpack. We were good to go, we were settled. I also took out a fire wand, but I didn't have any fire runes, so that, well, yeah, that didn't work out. I did get some extra obsidian, 
and we were back to our base. I really gotta get some obsidian soon. Really gotta get some extra obsidian. So, I got an ender pearl, I got some flint. I made another abyss watcher. And I wanted to get another waystone. I always need to carry a waystone on me so I can get back to my base quickly. And we were going to the nether. I had a new goal and it was to obtain some palladium. It sounds so cool. Palladium. No sad palladium. <laughs> it's so cool. I also tested out my obsidian skull and it was working really good. I was barely taking any lava damage. So lava was pretty much water to me now and that was awesome. I gained some extra coal, gained some extra levels. We were doing really good. I killed all the wither skeletons that came my way and I too shot them with this new sword. It was amazing. Man, I'm having a, such a good time in it now. I then tried to look for palladium. I wanted to see what it looks like. So it's a nether netherrack with some orange type of how do you say it? Like orange type of gems inside of it. So we definitely had to make sure I keep an eye out for those. I also found a pre-generated structure, but it did not have any inhabitants or any chests. So I'm not really sure what this place does, but I decided to leave it alone for now. I also get I also got some extra nether quartz and I found some stormix. Now you know what I'm doing with stormix? I'm upgrading chests with them because they give 108 stacks a pop. A pop, baby, it's so good. I also found some orange type of block, but sadly it was Midas gold. I then killed the annoying wither naga thingies, and they got one shot, so they were pretty easy. yeah, they were they were pretty easy to kill. I continued my exploration. Now the nether looks really cool in this mod pack, it has a very creepy vibe. I also found some type of nether structure, like a base, like a bunker, like a big bunker. And I wasn't really sure what this place was. It kept spawning wither skeletons, which was incredibly annoying, and I did not know where the spawners were. But in the end, I decided to climb the lava waterfall. Because I felt like there was a layer above this. And the moment I reached the new layer, I got immediately barraged with fire. Like, I saw this giant looking blaze and I knew that this guy would have some awesome drops. So I started whacking away at him and his shield started to go down. So I knew after that last shield I was able to kill him. Now this wildfire had 120 health. He was a piece of cake. Though. This guy stood no chance. I whacked away at him with my Stormix Sharpness 5 sword and this guy was running around. He didn't know what to do. He was shaking in his boots and then I slayed him. Drop it like it's... <laughs> Drop it like it's hot. Oh my god, that's such a funny achievement. He dropped some crown fragments, and with these you can make a wildfire crown. Now, this helmet was not really anything special. It also only gave two armor points, so I wasn't going to do anything with it. I climbed up until the last layer. Now, the last layer didn't have any more surprises for me. It was just the lava pool where everything flows down. I kept an eye on the ceiling in the nether in order to find some palladium. And oh my goodness, what the hell is that structure? Look at that. It is, it is gigantic. So I put a marker on my map and I made my way over to that structure. Meanwhile, I was still looking at the ceiling, but I was not having any luck with finding palladium. This thing was quite difficult to find. I mean, palladium is not like it spawns like coal, like everywhere. But I did find this huge structure and it looked like some kind of nuclear reactor, which is really strange. I've never seen this structure in any mod pack. There was a guy in a hazmat suit outside that was enchanted. And oh my god, is that a British skeleton holding a totem of undying? Dude, this, this thing is beefy. I just knocked him away with my knockback and I wanted to just like let him, let him swim in the lava. I'm not gonna deal with that. It takes way too many hits. I also looted up the chests that were inside of this nuclear reactor, but it was only flying obsidian. It would have been really cool if it was regular obsidian. I'm not gonna lie. And whoa, what is this? There is a gas trapped under the reactor and... Dude, this is looking like some creepy experiment. What the hell is going on here? There was a chest in the very middle and it held a helmet. 
A hazmat helmet protects the wearer from radiation. Okay. That's pretty... It's pretty niche. I got the lodestone and I towered up until I found the ghast. And it was such... Such a bad idea. Because this thing had... It's way too much health. It regenerated. It shot very strong fireballs. Look at this. I'm almost dead. Not good. Back out. Run away. We're not doing this. No, 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 no. Okay. I gotta get my bearings. This thing apparently stops shooting after you're outside of its field of vision. And its field of vision is pretty narrow. So, I was not gonna kill this thing. I was gonna tower up and see what was on top of the reactor. So, after towering up for a little bit, I got onto this nether fortress, which was going to be my stepping stone to get up to the reactor. I tried checking how I could get on top of the reactor, and I got knocked off. Oh my goodness. I almost died again. This place is cursed. I almost died two times. I'm not liking this place, but I really want the loot. I want to see what's on top of there because it looks like there's a chest. It has to be really good. I gathered up some new blocks in order to tower up again, and that was my stroke of luck. We found some palladium. Oh my god, look at this. Hottest baked <laughs> baked beans. <laughs> Wow, dude, these enchantments are... Enchantments, what am I saying? These achievements are really funny. Okay, we towered up a little bit extra and I made my way onto the reactor. Now, there was a chest inside that had a radiation shield. Incendium and releases radiation when blocking. Now, we were playing on the hardcore, so I wasn't gonna run a shield, but I'll always run a totem of undying. That was the safest way to go about it. I also got some blaze rods from a blaze spawner and it took ages before it spawned other blazes. So in the meantime, how are you guys doing? Leave it down in the comments. I'll get to it after killing these blazes. We needed a couple of blaze rods to make eyes of ender. We need some blaze powder for like brewing. We, we need it for a couple of things. But I think a couple of blaze rods was good enough. So I placed my waste stone down in this nether fortress and we were going to make our way home. It was time, we had spent enough time in hell, I wanted to go back to the peace and serenity of the overworld. And it was time to finally claim a ton of quests, and I got this fire gauntlet. Now this fire gauntlet's pretty cool, because it gives you fire aspect on whatever you use to hit something. So, if I have fire aspect and the fire gauntlet, I'm gonna deal quite a bit of fire damage. So it's, yeah, it's a cool artifact. I claimed the quest for the raw palladium and I put all of the smeltables into my auto smelter. Now I needed to find a way or I needed to learn pretty much how to make the alloy forge because I've never used that before in any other mod pack and for some reason I wasn't able to go to sleep. So I'm guessing while I was in the nether a blood moon started. So, I locked all my doors, I kept inside, and I just worked on the magic mod pack a little bit more. I did not have any of the items to pretty much make the spell blades, so I skipped on that. I did make an arcane staff, or I got an arcane staff, and I put the spell infinity on it. So the next item on the list was making a spell blade. Now I had enough items to make a fire spell blade, so I could claim the quest gave me another treasure chest, which was pretty dope. Pretty dope. I knew I was going to go the arcane route because I already had an arcane staff. So we were stacking up levels as I claimed the quests. To upgrade my staff, I needed another riding gun, so we were quite far away from it. That was no biggie though. The treasure chest was spitting out some good stuff and another totem of undying. So I wanted to see what I could make with these totems of undying. You can make a holy symbol that attacks with zero holy damage, but it gives you increased healing power. You can make a nullifying totem, you can make like some kind of totem staff, fire, a totem of arcane, like an armor set, like a divine armor set. It, it's pretty wild. I've never seen totems of undying crafting recipes. I then did a little repairing run where I repaired all of my armor because it was getting pretty low. After repairing all my armor, equipping it again, I was good to go. I checked on all of my smelting and claimed so many ingots. Ah, it's so beautiful. I stored them all in my inventory, well not my inventory, in my interface. 
and I started to make some deep slate bricks because this is what we need in order to make the alloy forge. We also needed a forge interface. I think it's called that. No, it's not called a forge interface. Man, I'm stupid. But we got all of the items necessary in order to make the alloy forge. I claimed some of the smooth stone inside of my auto smeltery and I could finally make this smeltery interface or alloy forge interface. Forge controller. Oh, man, I can't with these names anymore. You get what I'm saying, right? You get what I'm saying. Now I checked the quests and apparently there is multiple tiers of forge controller. That's the name. There's multiple tiers of the forge controllers. I immediately made a black stone one. So that was pretty high in tier. And I made some room in my smeltery room to get the forge controller and the alloy forge installed. Now it was pretty pretty easy installation. You just place a 3x3 three three and then use this type of pattern. And you need lava and all of the different metals. So I went back into the mines and I wanted to get... I should have like an in-game task list, like the things that I gotta do. That would be, that would be an idea. I did find some diorite outside my base and I completely messed up my landing so I, I dove right into the ravine. Now after claiming all of this diorite I wanted to go back home ASAP to make that spell table. Because one of the coolest things inside this mod pack that you can make is you can make a two-handed spell blade that has an inherent whirlwind ability and you can put another ability on top of it. So that is something that is really awesome. And the Whirlwind is incredibly powerful. So we gotta get that ASAP. I placed some of the bookshelves down in order to get a higher level enchantment on my spell book. And I placed the spell table down. We were set up, enchanting table, spell table, auto smelters. We got a bed, which is really important. And I claimed some of my Stormix from my interface and I made two more Stormix chests. These chests are really good, I love them, they change colors. Look at that, it's so pretty. And I got a couple of books. I wanted to get the two arcane books that are available, but first I placed down two Stormix chests in order to increase my storage capacity. Right now we were running 459 slots, which is actually quite big for like five chests. I put my spell tome in and I saw the arcane source and I also put my spell tome in and I got the other arcane book which is called the Tome of Arcane. 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 So I got an arcane missile and an arcane blast. Those are from the Book of Arcane and then the other one has the Amethyst Rain and Magic Missiles. I wanted to test out everything. So first was the Amethyst Rain and this is pretty cool. It shoots shards up in the air. And from what I believe, they also home in on targets. Like, look at this. You shoot them out and they home in. It's really cool. The damage was kind of was kind of bad, though. You know, it's like, look at this. It only deals like a heart and a half of damage. So it's, it's not that great. But that was no problem because you have ways to increase the damage. You can wear an armor set. You can wear some artifacts and stuff like that. But I got to my second spell, which is the Magic Missile. And this one is actually pretty good. It, shoot, it has pretty good rate of fire, shoots very fast, and it also homes. So as you can see, all of the missiles, they go towards my target, and I can stay away from safe distance. This combined with the spell Infinity gives me a really cool staff. All right, I got multidisciplined, and I obtained some silver and a ton of other stuff, and it was finally time. I wanted to work on my Metallurgium. We had all the things to make it, so we just had to put it in the forge and let it go. I prepared my inventory for the metallurgy. So I got palladium, orcalum, mithril, adamantine, and unobtainium. And that's when I realized I didn't have any lava, so yeah, we still had to work towards that. I quickly dove into the mines with 16 buckets. I mined completely down, and I found a lava pool. Hot stuff. Definitely. I claimed all of the lava buckets and I made my way back to my base. I put in all of the different metals as well as the lava for my forge and it was running. The metallurgium was being made. This was big stuff. On day 19 I already got metallurgium. Sick. Absolutely sick. The only problem being with the metallurgium is that you need to upgrade netherite to metallurgium and yeah as you probably know I, I don't have I don't have netherite 
I, I didn't think about that. I claimed the quest and I got another two metallurgium ingots. So we have enough to make a full armor set of metallurgium. Which is pretty insane. And then I had to figure out a way how to deal with the netherite problem. Yeah, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna deal with this, but we'll figure it out. I mean, I can obtain a nether star in order to get four netherite scrap, so that is the thing. And there, I believe there's also a quest where if I get one netherite scrap, I'll be able to claim three more. I enjoyed a little bit more of the peace and serenity inside my base and the good quality of the video. The moment I start moving, eh, oh my god, yeah, no. Again, I'm sorry about the video quality, guys. It is terrible, I know. I made my way over to the closest village that I could find and I wanted to start up some trading. I wanted to see if I could find a way how I can easily take those villagers back to my house and have a villager trading system set up. I call this one the Primal Village because I got an achievement that says it's the first village, which was pretty cool. Day 19 was setting really fast and I took out a sleeping bag and I took a long nap. Good nap, hell yeah. I found some Illumite and Mesmerite, which are really strange blocks, never heard of them before. So I just gathered up a bunch of them and I was going to put them in my storage facility. I then found this place, which was pretty cool. I saw a ton of illagers all around in this base and I wasn't really sure what they would do. Hostile neighbors. So that's, that's not good news. These guys are hostile. I really didn't want to deal with them, so I went through the main entrance and I wanted to scout out the location. I was going to give a friendly, friendly hello to my neighbors. I mean, killing them is also a friendly hello, it's just in a different way. After fighting them off, I claimed a ton of chests and I got a cool achievement for it. I got sen sen Sentinel, which pretty much means that I've opened a hundred loot chests. There was a basement layer as well, and this is where things started to get really crazy. Because I saw that there was a big room that was lit up at the end of the hallway, and there was this really big illager. And apparently it was a boss, and I didn't know that. But this guy started spinning around and spawned a Ravenger. Like, excuse me, what do you mean? So I ran back in the hallway. I thought this guy would be too big to fit into the hallways, and I was right. So I barraged him with magic. I tried hitting him with my sword, but that wasn't really a good way. Barraged him with some more magic. And then I got the great idea to drown him in lava. So yeah, multiple war crimes were committed on this, on this monster, yeah. After shooting him down with some more of my magic missiles, I was able to kill him. I then went in for the kill. I wanted to kill this adjudicator, but this guy had 300 health. And he was spawning, yeah, Vindicators all over, and I wasn't feeling it, man. This was a difficult fight. I didn't want to die here yet, because I didn't have that many totems of Undying. And I also didn't have my Whirlwind yet. So I called it the Illager Summoner Boss, and I made a note that I had to come back another day to kill this guy. For now, I was going to take my time, continue on day 20, and I was going to explore a little bit more. I was exploring... The Wow, my mic was quite far away. I was exploring the beautiful night with some rain while I fought this bear and I looted up some random chests in the overworld. I got a cool bee's nest and an amethyst shard. Well, actually two of them, which was really nice. And for some reason, there was a netherite hoe inside. I mean, how crazy is that? While hearing the thunder, I got another chest and of course, it was a mimic. Oh man, God, I love these things. <laughs> I got the achievement for taxidermist though. And apparently there is floating islands in the sky. So I gathered up a bunch of wood and my plan was to go up to this sky base. I first slept a little bit and then I wanted to tower up. Now, it was a beautiful morning with some sunshine, some bees, and a lot of spell casting. I got poisoned on the way up by that bee, and I looted up these floating islands. Now, there was not that much loot inside, and the islands weren't big, but I did get an emerald, so that was pretty cool. While making my way down, I found this guy, 
and he dropped a spell blade and a book. So when I read the book, that's when I, well, realized something pretty scary. As my faithful minion, you are to deal with any magic users. If you run into any spell components for the alternating barrier, do take it back with you. And they're pretty much hired to kill me. So that's a scary thought. There is an entity in this world that really wants the dispatch of me. Now I'm running in hardcore, so if I die once, well, that guy achieves his goal. First, I needed to start and get some extra wood. That big tree was a witch hazel tree, and I got a stack of wood from it, which was sick. I then mined some bang bangalum, banglum, banglum ore, and I got a achievement for a legendary bang. So this ore explodes if you mine it. And I enjoyed a beautiful sunset. I had to take a screenshot because this place is really cool. There, this third person camera viewpoint is really sick as well. I mean, come on, look at this. It feels like you're playing Dark Souls or some stuff. I placed down my sleeping bag and I took a nap. And in the morning time, I got around to finding some more morsel. I killed a ton of cows and got so much more steak. I was gonna be set for a while. And after a little swim in some river, I explored a little bit more. I killed some witches on the way because we also needed to get a witch eye. With this witch eye we can combine it with an eye of ender and make another eye that will allow me to go to the end. Sadly I didn't get a witch eye yet, so I went to the nearest village and I got the waystone to go home. There were a ton of quests that I still needed to claim. Apparently I had done all my damage taking training. So I received an extra heart, which was pretty good. And I also killed one of these things apparently during my travels. I don't remember when I killed it, but it gave me a trident, which was really cool. I stored away all of the stuff that I gotten in my travels and I went to the nether. There were still a couple of things we needed to do in the nether and one of those things was to kill some wither skeletons in order to get three wither heads so I could summon a wither, claim a nether star, and then claim the four pieces of netherite scrap that would go with that quest. First, I got some stormix and I went to the mines to do some dungeoneering inside of the nether. So you remember those mine shafts in the overworld? Well, they got them in the nether too, which is really cool. I've never seen any mod pack that has these type of mine, sh mine shafts in the nether. Back at home, I repaired my car mod pickaxe because this pickaxe goes incredibly hard with that fortune 4. I ate up the steak and I went to bed. We got to day 23 pretty fast actually. Now the next skill I was working on was strength. So I added a point and I went to the nether. I needed to explore a little bit more in the nether, because there is also a ton of mobs and bosses that I want to fight in the nether. I was definitely not ready for those just yet, but that's fine. In the meantime, I got a Stormix shell, which is the nether diamond. Now with this Stormix shell, you can make a couple of things. The first thing you can make with it is a Stormix shield. Now you can also upgrade things with it. Now, there is a drill you can upgrade, it's like a pickaxe, but it works on energy. And that drill was pretty good, but I was still far away from getting it. So for now, I worked on getting that ancient debris. After a lot of mining, I finally found one. And if I get one netherite scrap, I can claim a quest and I will be able to get three more. So that gives us enough to get one netherite ingot. And if we get a netherite ingot, you already know we're making that sick chest plate, that metallurgium chest plate. Man, it sounds so good saying it. So I claimed my netherite scrap and the quest was completed. So I went to the tab as fast as I could. I claimed the other three scraps and I made my very first netherite ingot. The metallurgium ingot was ready. I took out my chest plate, which had protection three, and we, well, I wanted to repair it, but I forgot that I was in the wrong tool set. There it is, upgrade station. Netherite chest plate with protection three. Dope. Metallurgium chest plate with protection three. God damn, 12 armor points. This is so, oh, this is so cool. <laughs> And it even looks awesome! I mean, look at those shoulder pads. Those are some 
Those are some thick shoulders, boy. Now, I needed to enchant a couple more books because I definitely needed Unbreaking 3 on this chest. But that was one of the big things. I also got a Bog Armor enchantment and a Soul Siphon. Now there's a couple of enchantments that make you get more experience from mobs and that was a big must. It was a little bit too expensive to put Protection 4 on it, so I skipped for that on that one. First, I wanted to see what I could all make with golden apples. I had still laying around a couple of golden apples and the crafting recipes weren't too great for it. So I wanted to get a really good weapon. From my past days I've experienced that a longsword with whirlwind goes incredibly hard. For two reasons actually. First reason being that you can well, cover ground a lot faster because the whirlwind makes you go faster. And the second thing is it deals so, so much damage. Every second you're dealing pretty much three times the attack damage of the sword. And it deals it to multiple mobs. There is a penalty for each mob that you hit simultaneously. It will deal a little bit less damage. But no problem. I had a plan. We were going to the prison quarters in order to get a little bit of experience and then we could enchant this arcane greatsword. I also claimed a ton of quests because I went to the nether and I went to prison quarters, which gave me 23 levels. First I wanted to sleep and then I was going to add my enchanted books on top of my arcane greatsword. And it was still too expensive, but I did have void strike on this one. Void strike is incredibly powerful. It pretty much makes it so that at some point you have a chance to not just deal crit damage, but to deal an incredible amount of crit damage. So with my new sword in hand, I was going back to my neighbors and I was gonna give them the very hard welcoming gift of death. So yeah, this Illager boss, he did not know what was coming. I gappled up, I took out my arcane greatsword and I just rushed in. I just started dealing damage to this dude. Now he spawned Vindicators, which was what almost killed me the last time, but that was not going to be a problem this time, because I can deal damage of the Illager dungeon, but it didn't hold any loot. I got attacked by many many Vexes while inside of this place and it started to really annoy me. I wanted to get out of here ASAP. So I continued on exploring. We were on day 24. We had Metallurgium Chestplate, we had the Arcane Greatsword, an Enchanted Storm Mix Sword, and we were going hard. Back at home, I needed to store away some of the riches that I had acquired during my travels. And I wanted to make a trophy room. It's an idea I got at that point because I got like a special banner drop from that Illager boss. Um, but to be totally honest with you, I completely forgot about making that trophy room about halfway through the mod pack. So bear with me on that one. I'll do it in the 200 days if we get to it. I sorted my inventory and I sorted out what I wanted to do. So I had two Wither Skeleton Skulls already in my chest. Now, if we want to upgrade more Metallurgium, we... We desperately need to get Witherite. Uh, Witherite, what am I saying? That is something from Rad too. Netherite. We need to get Netherite. So back in the Nether, I needed to get another Wither Skeleton Skull. Because if we kill a Wither, we get a Nether Start, then we get another Netherite Ingot. So, I mean, the goal was pretty easy. I was using my Amethyst Rain while killing these Nagas, and it is so cool to run with magic and with like whirlwind and everything. I mean, this mod pack is just so cool. All right, we found ourselves a Nether Fortress, and we got those Wither Skeletons. Now I had looting on my sword, so it shouldn't take too long until we find Wither Heads, or so I thought. First, I found this castle, and oh my God, stairs are my greatest enemy. At the top of this castle, there were a ton of Wither Spawners. Well, Wither Skeleton Spawners. Wither Spawners would be a little bit too crazy. But these Wither Skeleton Spawners allowed me to kill a ton of Wither Skeletons. And just like that, we got a Wither Skeleton Skull. And wow, this guy's this guy a named mob. He's a toxic sprinter Wither Skeleton with a very beefy health bar. He dropped an enchanted diamond sword, which was really cool. Got smite 4 on it, that's a pretty hefty enchantment. 
So I put down my waystone, we went home, and I wanted to find a good place to summon the wither. We were also one skill point away from ascending my strength. Repairing my car my pickaxe was a big thing, and I went to bed. I kind of forgot about the metallurgium for a little bit because I went to the mines in order to spawn the wither in a safe place and I first started killing some mobs I then found this really cool loomerite which is well I mean it looks really cool I found some lapis and then I got to like a mining spree found another fucking mimic ah oh, man these things are so annoying Completely forgot about the mythic and I mined some more. I got some adamantine, which is really dope. And I placed down my wither spawn. This guy was beefy. The health bar looked incredibly beautiful. Look at the health bar. It is so fucking cool. I don't know what mod that is, but that makes me happy. And of course, you know I had to bust out the big old whirlwind that this guy was standing. No fucking chance, man. Come on, let's go. We just got health of his health bar down with just one whirlwind. I pulled out the Stormix sword and everything was going crazy. This guy was spewing wither heads all over. I was getting withered. I was getting damaged. But I started slaying him and oh boy, this guy was down. This guy was down. Whether you want it or not. Yo, whoever made the titles of these achievements needs to get a raise. <laughs> so we got a Lord Soul. Okay, this is pretty cool. The Lord Soul will allow you to make a cage for the Lord Soul. So you need 4 iron, 9 diamonds, the Wither Star, and 15 levels. And then I can make a cage. With that cage, I can craft 3 different weapons. The Skofnung, Skofnung, which gives a thousand cuts. The Crucible Sword, which has a enhanced attack, and then it goes on a cooldown. And there is also the Soul Reaper. The Soul Reaper, well, you kill mobs, you get their souls, and after a while you can use those souls to summon a familiar. I, something inside of me just wants to run with a scythe, a big old scythe, so I decided to go on that. I claimed the quest and got four more nether scraps. Now the problem being that you'll see later, we cannot make any more metallurgium items. We'll get to that a little bit later, but yeah. For now, I decided to do some more dungeoneering in the nether while looking for soul sand. You know, you're thinking, why soul sand? But first, ascend the strength. So, my training for the Ascended Strength had also started. Many cool things were happening. I started submitting a ton of the items for my cage, and I got the cage. I had the soul, I had the cage, now we just needed the items to make the soul sight. And I needed to decide on the next skill that I was going to ascend, and it would be Swiftness. First, we do Swiftness. We want to go fast. Fast as fuck, boy. Oh yeah, I was saying that I needed soul sand. I need soul sand in order to smelt it down into souls to upgrade iron in order to make the soul side. But I first got ambushed by a ton of piglin because apparently we were inside of the piglin kingdom. This was a nether fortress that was quadruple the size of a normal fortress and it held armored piglin and a king somewhere apparently. These guys were beefy. They had 50 health and they were fully drenched in gear. Now, still, Whirlwind goes hard. I told you guys, the Whirlwind goes incredibly hard. Sad, sadly though, these guys destroyed my helmet already. So my car mod helmet was gone. I, this was starting to become a real problem. They dealt a ton of damage. They were with way too many piglins, but we made it to the throne room. Now this was a pretty cool looking room. I saw a ton of gold blocks, so I already knew I wanted to claim those. And after whirlwinding down those piglin, it was time to claim my spoils of war. I was just gonna destroy this king's throne. I mean, it was nowhere to, to be seen around. So hey man, if you leave your throne alone, I'll... Ooh! Dude, this guy's storing 
N ancient debris? What do you mean? Give me that. Give me all your stuff, man. What the hell? After claiming a little bit more of the random chests around the Piglin Kingdom, I needed to make a quick stop home because my inventory and backpack were absolutely brimming with loot. After making my way back home, I wanted to start smelting that ancient debris first of all. And I wanted to, well, get that netherite ingot and upgrade another armor piece. So I made a diamond helmet and I got that netherite ingot. And while I was preparing my soul scythe to be made, I submitted some sticks. Well, I first had to get them out of my inventory system, of course. But I got the sticks. I submitted the sticks. And then I realized I needed to make these souls. But I wasn't really sure how to do that. I know I had the smelt soul sound down. But as you'll see later, it's a little bit more difficult than what it seems like. But the soul ingots were the last two items remaining. I repaired some of my mithril armor and I equipped Julia's helmet again. So we were running with a full armor set, but yeah, I kind of forgot to make that metallurgium helmet. I'm sorry. And we were back in the nether, exploring. Because I swam through some lava, I did some dungeoneering, I explored a little bit on the land. And after a while, I actually found some soul sand, which was really cool. It almost took me a full day to find that soul sand. Like, it took a long time. I placed down my waystone, and I went back home. Because I wanted to smelt that soul sand ASAP to get that soul scythe. That thing looks sick. I want it. I need it. First, I messed around a little bit with my settings. And it started to look like it was going to be raining soon. I smelted my soul sand and that's when I realized I made scoria instead of the souls. So I had to consult the wiki in order to, well, learn how to smelt it properly. Maybe there was some different kind of furnace, but no, it was something completely different. But now I was going to forget all about smelting that soul sand and forget about making the metallurgium because I was going to get distracted again. You know how it is. And while I got distracted, I was checking out the quest system. There was still a couple of things I had to do in order to claim the quest for the normal quest line. I still had to submit some raw mutton. Now, the mutton was something I needed to get during the daytime. It was pretty easy to find. I mean, I could easily find the sheep. So I killed the sheep while I de-equipped my fire gauntlet. Otherwise, it would be cooked mutton. And then I submitted it and the quest was done. The next thing on the quest list was getting a Void Blossom. We needed to kill the Void Blossom and find the Lush Caves. First of all, I went to the prison quarters because that was the next thing on the list. Remember how I forgot about the soul ingots and I forgot about the metallurgium? Yeah, this is what distracted me. I wanted to go and kill a boss for some reason. Don't. Don't worry, it'll all be fine in the end. We will make 100 days, I promise you, or we're at least gonna try to. And we'll see how it goes. How much I will get distracted? Count it down in the comments below after these 100 days, how many times I got distracted. I'm curious what you guys think. So, back in the prison quarters, we needed to make our way to the first dimension we needed to visit. And of course, you gotta love the serenity. There is, there is absolutely nothing serene about this god-awful dimension. It is filled with mobs, it is filled with dangers all around. I went back in the portal because I'm an idiot, and I needed to explore. So, what do you do to find the boss of these prison quarters? The boss itself is located in the prison quarters at the top floor. First you go to the very bottom floor, and then you go to this dimension. In this dimension, you travel around and you probably get lost a crap load of times until you find a certain type of elevator that leads down to a dungeon. And as you can see, you gotta do a lot of exploring before you find that. Sometimes you can get lucky. But here I got lucky because it didn't even take me a day to find this one. But I found the elevator. Once you 
go down the elevator, you will be teleported, well, pretty much taken to the lower floor oh, hi, Mark. of the second dimension. In this one, you will get chased by assassins while you're trying to make your way to the end of the dungeon. Go through all of the dungeons, you will have to drop a couple of floors and you'll have to run through a ton of mobs. But at the very end of this dungeon is a chest with a vine. Now, Jack and the Beanstalk, pretty much that refers to what we'll do next. You need to make your way back to your original portal that got you into this dimension. So save the location. After that, you jump back in the portal and you need to go back to the very top floor of the prison quarters. Remember how we dropped two to three layers? Well, we gotta climb those again first. Now. After climbing up those, you will need to find the lush room. There is one small plant in the middle of the room and you right click the vine with it. There, there will be another portal which leads you to the boss's dimension. And even the rats avoid this place. You take the elevator down and the boss fight will immediately start. This thing is chained up and dangerous. Conjunctivius. I, I probably butchered that name, but this guy shoots out spikes and he will run towards you. This guy is a madman. And this boss fight goes in multiple stages. So the first stage is this guy is chained up and he will shoot out at red beam and that will target you and he will go towards you. After you deal enough damage, this guy spawns tentacles. He becomes immune and you have to fight off the tentacles. Be careful, because these things hurt. They hurt like hell. After you kill the tentacles, the boss becomes vulnerable again. But he will first do this. After you deal a little bit more damage to him, boom, he starts shooting you with lasers. So you have to dodge and weave around the lasers, or you can just keep shooting. And then he will start rushing you again like that. So these stages will continue until you deal enough damage to him so where you are in his last phase. His last phase is he will shoot out beams as a last ditch effort to kill you before he dies. And then I dealt the final blow. Sadly it was the fire that killed him which made him not drop any experience. But there we go. You got something in your eye? We finally finished off the Convinius, Convictus, Convictius. Um, I'm gonna keep butchering that name. I'm gonna kill this guy quite a few times because he drops a ton of experience. But you will get this. Now, whatever you do, do not equip this cursed sword. Trust me on this. Don't do it. Luckily for me, this guy dropped a ton of emeralds, gold, diamonds, and normally a ton of experience. But, well, I figured out now that I shouldn't let him die by fire. Then I claimed the quest to kill the mutant bat, and we were taking the elevator back up. It was time to go home. We did enough battling. We needed to take a good long rest, chill out, do a bit of a mining session with some lo-fi. You know what I'm saying? Like the chill kind of stuff. First though, I needed to get out of this place, but with my whirlwind, this was easy peasy, lemon squeezy. These guys stood no chance against that whirlwind. Normally these mobs are pretty dangerous, but man, they stood no chance. Oh boy. Okay, so the souls were smelting and I upgraded two iron ingots into the soul ingots. I went to the quest tab and I submitted the two soul ingots and I got the soul reaper. Oh my god, look at this thing. This thing is so cool. Oh, it is so cool. Holy shit. Oh, look in my hand. It's even cooler. Oh, look at that stuff. It's so big as well. Handling big equipment. Oh, yeah. And that's when I realized that after updating my mod pack, they put a fucking level restriction on upgrading to netherite. Are you kidding me? I need smithing 20 to upgrade my helmet to netherite. So, yeah, well, we're stuck on the metallurgium now because I need smithing level 20. Ah, the only upgraded piece of armor I have is my chest plate. But, you know how the saying goes, it is what it is. We'll take a nap and we'll continue in the morning time. 
So, next thing on the list, getting every single spell tome. Um, I'm not sure why I do this, but I'm like a, a hoarder. You know what a hoarder is? Like, you want to get everything inside of the mod pack? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right here. Never gonna use these spell tomes. I'm probably never gonna use them. But I wanted them anyway. And it was time for the lo-fi and the mining. So, hey, enjoy the piece, guys. We're mining some redstone. We're mining some mithril. Getting some of that Morkite. Morkite's pretty cool, by the way. Get some more mithril. Getting some lapis lazuli as well. We got some diamonds up in this place. And we did some water exploration. And the whirlwind even works in the water. Look at that. It's pretty cool, huh? We got some more Morkite. And I found some Karmot. And yeah, it was really good. I found some Karmot because my pickaxe was dying. It was, it was on the verge, man. So I got one, two... Three Karmot Ore. Which gave me four Karmot pieces. Oh yeah, let's go. We got that Mithril, some more Mithril. I don't know why I'm mining this much Mithril, but it's Mithril. And I found this place. Okay, okay, calm down, calm down. It's just a mimic, it's just a mimic. I had to take my bearings for a second and press the escape tab because these mimics are playing with me, man. They're playing with me. This guy did drop a snorkel, which is really cool because I got infinite underwater breeding now. So it's worth it. We ended day 30 with mining some lapis and some iron. I then took a nice nap in some dark caves. I don't recommend this, by the way. I then collected some quests of the main storyline and the next thing we needed to make was a Moonstone Compass. Now the Moonstone Compass is pretty cool because this will allow us to find the old champion remains. It's a really cool boss and a really dangerous one because that spawns the frenzied shade that killed me. Oh, we did find some extra unobtainium. You know what that means, right? That means we're gonna get some extra metallurgium. <laughs> Oh, spicy. I got a total of five metallurgy. Pretty cool. I then found a gold chest. Now, these chests are locked, and I knew I had a key remaining in my inventory system. So I quickly went home, and I started making the Moonstone Compass first. Because we wanted to get some cool boss fights up in this place. The Moonstone Compass was made, and I claimed the quest. Now... The metallurgium ingot was something I wanted to brush ASAP because I'm pretty sure we still had all of the materials remaining to make one. I had all the oracalum, all the palladium, the adamantine, and I just needed the mithril to put in the alloy forge and we were going to make three more metallurgium ingots. I also claimed all of the quests for those spell books which gave me a load of levels, an absolute buttload of levels which was really nice and I wanted to enjoy that's light work no reaction baby we then got bag of souls but I wasn't sure so I took the unbreaking and Oof. light work no reaction but damn that's that's some really good pants holy shit I de-equipped my mithril leggings and I made another claymore because adding books to my first claymore is really expensive I wanted to get eight and that is a pretty good claymore that I just got there I wanted to combine both of the claymores and make an even stronger one this in itself was pretty expensive 28 levels but given I just claimed all those quests I reckoned it was worth it so I took that one but I couldn't put any other books on it which was weird I had to sleep my confusion away Day 33 was right around the corner and I went to the big old city. I wanted to see if we got lucky and there was a mending villager anywhere close. But since I updated my mod pack to the last version and we no longer can make netherite because we need smithing, while well, we can no longer trade because we need trade level 1. And of course I didn't have any levels remaining. So I made a pit stop at the mine, I teleported back home because that was the wrong stop and I took my golden key out of my chest. Now I thought if there's a golden key you gotta use this is gonna be a banging chest. And I mean, 
the gold lock's pretty cool, but the chest was... I... It was... It was okay. It's protection for boots, but I can't take the protection off, so it kind of sucks. I got the Ender Pearl and the Primordial Dagger, and the Primordial Dagger seems pretty cool. It's a universal spell blade with three spell slots, but I wasn't too deep into the spell mod pack yet because, well, I mean, you've seen that whirlwind. That whirlwind goes hard, and there is another gold chest. This is. Wait, and there's another gold chest. Wait, this is pretty, pretty lucky. I wanted to see if I had any more keys remaining. I think I still had one left. So. It's gonna be good stuff. So I repaired my car and mop pickaxe because we were gonna be doing some extra mining, of course, if we found some good old ores. And I made two more waystones. You can, in mod packs like these, you can never have enough waystones. Honestly, they are such a big lifesaver. I also made some boats because I got sidetracked and I saw that on the map, which looks like an ice fortress. And that looks like an ice dungeon. And that looks like a city covered in ice. So we went there first and I completely forgot about the gold chest. I mean, you guys are getting used to it by now that I'm getting distracted all the time. And hey, look at that, that's a diamond. Find the cage. Wait, so you're, you're meaning to say there is a dungeon underneath this place? Okay, let's see if we can find that. Well, mission abort, there was no dungeon, but there is a sunken ship. And if you have ever played a mod pack that has the end remastered, sunken ships give buried treasure maps, and buried treasure maps give a certain eye, and the eye makes you go to the end. But first we were gonna kill a different type of eye. We were going to jump in this prison quarters and do a speedrun of killing this boss. Because as you know, I told you guys that this boss drops a shitload of experience, and I'm about to show you how much exactly. I promise you, it's good stuff. And luckily we already went to that special dimension once so we don't have to do it again as long as i don't run out of en endurance i was about to say endurance as long as we don't run out of durability on this jack and the beanstalk fine we can do this boss as many times as we like and there is also a respawn mechanic so we're gonna dive into that deeper later first i needed to kill the conjunctivius hey i said it right this time conjunctivius whirlwind up in him and start spell blasting. Wait, I got the wrong spell book equipped. Well, I mean, a war cry works as well. This thing was shivering. It was quaking in its boots. It didn't know what to do. Oh, yeah. And as soon as I start shooting it with magic, it starts going after you. Of course. Yeah, come on, buddy. You, we, we all know you're going down. We all know you're going down. Battle music doesn't even have to be that hard anymore because you're finished. These tentacles ain't got nothing on them. Come on, man. Show me what you got. I got emerald rain, amethyst rain. I got everything. I got spells. We're doing wizard stuff. Shadow wizard gang, man. This thing was going down pretty easily. It didn't really pose a threat to me anymore because I had mostly protection for and everything. Although the lasers were, they could do some damage actually. But we finished it off with my spell staff and oh boy, Whew. that's immediately 50 levels. The weird thing was that you'll... Oh yeah, that's what I was waiting for. That's when you know you got a ton of levels. 15 levels. I immediately ascended my swiftness and I started dumping points into smithing. And again, I forgot the one point I needed for trading, so we're gonna get back to that later. Because when I claim these skill points now, I'm gonna forget again. <laughs> I made my way back outside of the prison quarters and I was going to take a nap because it was nighttime and I honestly didn't want to explore during the night. Especially these deep dark waters. I mean, they're scary, man. Come on. Ever played Subnautica? Yeah, that's why you don't go into dark waters. I don't want to get my ass eaten by a Leviathan. Hell no. After exploring with my boat, I found this ginormous structure. You don't see it very clearly now, but when I go underwater, man, you'll see this thing is... This thing is absolutely crazy. I went inside and I saw an Elder Guardian immediately, so I knew this place meant business. Absolute business. Business of slaying these mobs, yo! <laughs> well, I was just hoping there was going to be some really good loot inside this place. The weird thing was that normally I thought an Elder Guardian drops an eye. 
but I think maybe those are the only ones that spawn in the original ancient ancient um, underwater place. <clears throat> Normally, I think they only spawn in the original Minecraft underwater dungeon. So, yeah, I thought it was weird. So I was still missing an eye. That was a thing now. After exploring deeper, I found this guy. And he was pretty nuts. This was another Elder Guardian that didn't drop an eye. And I was... <laughs> I see what I did there. I was really confused. Like, really confused. I also got mining fatigue, so that wasn't optimal. And then I found just a random trident laying around for some reason. I tried taking this thing out or replacing it with an item, but didn't really do much. And I walked over it and picked it up. So, it, yeah, it's very... Very cool addition. You can just get a trident instantly. It's a pretty strong weapon. So to all of you who start, go down to this dungeon and claim that trident. The underwater exploration was going to take a little turn towards sea exploration. I also killed a jellyfish there. I don't think I was meant to do that. I also found these pretty cool chests and it has suspicious eye. Yeah, strange looks. Definitely strange looks. I thought this was another Eye of the End Remastered mod, but I was completely wrong. It's from a completely different mod. I went back inside the giant dungeon because I knew there was a chest I hadn't looted. And this chest held a ton of, like, Nautilus shells and Prismarine crystals. It was, it was really good. I then found a temple quad, and these places seem to have many spawners and many chests, but not a real dungeon inside. I claimed a ton more of these underwater chests and I got two buckets of axolotls. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Maybe I'll make an aquarium with these axolotls. Who knows? Found another ocean quad, claimed a couple more levels, and then I found this weird ore, aquarium ore. Now it sounds pretty good, and I wanted to check out what exactly it could do. And of course, it is a water themed armor set, so it has natural water protection, natural respiration, depth strider, and aqua affinity. Really cool stats, actually. So, if there would be an underwater dimension in this mod pack, that would be a set you really want to get. And the blue moon rose. So, I got a permanent luck effect. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Later on, I killed another jellyfish, and man, this thing cursed me. Why would you do something like that, man? Come on. I also put another point into smithing, and I explored a lot more underwater. These dungeons are pretty cool. They're generally very nice. <laughs> oh, my. Man, these, these things are even underwater. It's unbelievable. They're everywhere. They're just everywhere. Come on, man. Don't let it be enough. Yeah, swim away, swim away, swim away. I dare you to come back. Playing with me. I'm telling you, this, this mod pack is playing with my mental sanity. Ooh, look at that. That's a lot of loot. Okay, I take it back. The mod pack's not playing with me because damn, that loot was spicy. I then stranded onto a random beach of dirt and I took a nap. Because what a better place than the beautiful outside. I jumped straight back in the ocean because I was not done exploring the ocean yet. And I immediately went back to land because actually I I completely changed my mind. I am done with the ocean. I was going to kill this caravan of illagers. Oh yeah. These guys were scouting that house. There was a really nice villager in that house and I just wanted to protect him. So here we go. Slapping them on the head with a big claymore. And I got the voluntary exile. Any crazy mobs, but I definitely thought the waves would get harder. And for now, I was still managing with my world, which was absolutely decimating these waves. But soon I would see that there will be some bigger foes joining the battle. And there it is. That is a Ravenger. And those things are scary. Unless you've got a whirlwind and you can apparently kill them with it very easily. So yeah, I thought this was going to be an... No. No, there is one inside. Oh my god. No. It killed my only villager. He was going to haunt me for the rest of my days. I'm sorry. Rest in peace, unknown villager. You'll be 
I've never forgotten. I, I can't promise I'll remember you. Back in the sea, and yes, I know, I went back to the sea. I wanted to find this vessel, because that's one of the structures I haven't found yet, and I wanted to loot it. First, I wanted to take a nap, and we were halfway to day 40. So I needed to make a little bit of haste. And I don't know, this vessel, it seemed to be... There was something off about it. I had a bad feeling of... That's why I had a bad feeling. Whirlwind activated. We are going to go straight ham on these guys. I will destroy every single spawner and claim every experience orb that I can find on this ship. It is my duty as a faithful citizen of the Minecraft world. I need to get overpowered and quickly. But these guys stood no chance, of course, because that claymore goes way too hard. The loot in this place was kind of mid. I mean, the only cool thing were diamonds. I also found the journal, the cruise log entry, and there was just a guy yelling over there. So I don't know, I really don't know what was going on. Apparently I hadn't claimed the quest for the Convictrius, Convictrius, and it gave me a Void Shot bow, which is a crazy powerful bow. If I get a couple more of these and I can combine them together, the enchantments will go absolutely wild. Cause it got Void Shot, and Void Shot, as you know, is the same like Void Strike, it's got an insane crit factor. I also found this weird floating village, and it was called Atlantis. So, maybe we'll find some riches here? I'm not sure. I'll definitely try to, but this place seems a bit small. I did place a waystone down anyhow to save this place, because it was, it was a pretty cool village, just in the middle of the ocean. And I got another treasure chest, so you know we were gonna let that baby pop! Come on man, who cannot get happy from a sound like that? And it was next to my storage facility, so I could just dump all the stuff in there anyway, which was really nice. I also found out you can make a charged ender pearl, which is a reusable and it gives some bonuses. Pretty crazy stuff, I've never seen a rechargeable ender pearl. You can also make infusion tables, and I needed some TNT. Now you might ask why I need some TNT. No, it's not to reenact the, the Oppenheimer scene. No, we're not gonna do that. It is to actually mine for ancient debris. Because we were still in need of quite some... Quite some netherite. And to do that, I needed a ton of sand. Because as you saw from those crafting recipes, you can use more kite. So the first thing I needed to do was get a ton of sand. We're talking like eight stacks of sand. Because I wanted to make two stacks of TNT. I was going to blow up the whole nether, man. And sand farming is pretty easy, given you have an efficiency for a shovel. I already got three stacks and I used up all the more kite I had, which gave me a measly 23 TNT. So I wasn't really happy with that and I wanted to go back to the mines in order to find some extra more kite. Because as you remember, we got this Karma pickaxe, which has fortune three on it, and additional inherent fortune. So when I mine one block of more kite, I get around eight more kite a pop, which is pretty crazy. You know, I'm, I'm so done with these guys that I'm not even gonna freak out anymore. I'm just gonna, just gonna swing my sword, just gonna kill him, and get back to my Morkite mining. Hell yeah. It was going fast. I was finding a ton of Morkite. It's really good that this is a common material because I really wanted to do TNT mining. I've never done it before. Like, I've done it in the past mod packs, but maybe like 10 or 12 TNT, but never like a, a huge operation. Because I never make a, gu a gunpowder farm. But in this case, I had a lot of Morkite a lot of TNT and I was gonna start out with 40 TNT. I thought this was gonna go really good. Like in my mind, I was gonna find 10, 12, 16 ancient debris. Um, I, I really didn't know it's that rare that I wouldn't find it. So I detonated the first 12 TNT. I recovered my button and I let it blow. And it's a really cool sight. Like stuff exploding is really cool. Not finding ancient debris, however, was less cool. So I decided to just blow all the other TNT also. The whole 28, which is not that much. 
and I expanded into two, one big hallway, one small hallway, and one mini hallway. I thought if I could spread it out a little bit like this, it would give the best result. And when I let it blow, it actually did give me a pretty good result because I could already see some ancient debris. I was quite satisfied actually. It had a pretty cool effect and I got some ancient debris. And well, sadly for me, this was like the only ancient debris that I found. So let's not talk about the TNT mining. I'm going to try to do it again later. But first, we needed a ton of Morkite if we wanted to go back to that TNT farming. I went into the Sea of Atlantis and I immediately went to this first cool place that I saw. This was like a temple structure, like an upgraded jungle temple. It looked pretty cool. I jumped inside and I immediately got a message. Get out. So I knew this place was gonna have some good loot. At least that is if I could find the loot. I decided to cheat and just dig down. The blocks weren't protected, so I'm sure this is the way how to loot up this place. And luckily for me, I did find a chest. That was pretty cool. Got an emerald. And I found these zombie villagers. They were pretty beefy. Three hits from my sharpness five storming sword. Pretty beefy, man. And I figured it wasn't worth it, so I wanted to loot up these two last chests, get that spawner, and then just dip. We were already on 59 levels as well, so the levels were going fast. Right next to the temple was a big beach. And you know what a big beach means? That means we can farm a ton of sand. So I went back home to get my shovel. And after claiming my shovel, I was going to flatten those mountains. And by the power of editing, I will give you a flattened place. Look at that. It's beautiful. I did get a ton of, em of uh, emerald stacks. No, not emerald stacks. I gave a ton of sand stacks. Which was good. I just needed some extra morkite now. And I actually accidentally press the button and you can change the mob's health bar which is really cool i mean look at that there is so many different options you can change the position the scale the color yeah pretty sick i then went on my quest to find some more morkai because we were still gonna go back to the nether and i found this creepy place it had skulk all over it there were sensors everywhere I really wasn't sure what I was dealing with here. But hey, if you mine one of those skulk sensors, it gives you EXP, so that's pretty cool. Back exploring for more kite, I made my way down and I got a Surprise, horse. motherfucker! Of course. Are you still even surprised that I find these mimics all over the place? I'm just gonna stop opening chests from now on. Maybe that's an idea. I got some more more kite. I went to bed. And I hoped that we were getting really close to getting enough stacks of Morkite in order to leave this place alone. I'd done enough mining. I got 33 emeralds from the, um, emeralds. I say it again. 33 diamonds from that, which was pretty wild. And some more Morkite and more Morkite. Of course, there's always more Morkite. And a lot more. I think you're going to get sick of seeing me mine Morkite, to be honest. Because I found... Well, I needed two more stacks. So I found some more. And some more. And some more, of course. And we were set. I had gotten all the more kite I wanted. And I hoped that on day 37 I could find some more ancient debris. Repaired my karma pickaxe, but I was getting low on karma ingots. Stored away all the stuff to make the TNT. And I just brought one and a half stacks of TNT. Let's go. This is good stuff. I could make some really big explosions with this. So we went straight to the nether and it was explosion time. If you ever watched Konosuba, you know what this spell means. Explosion. Well, I didn't find any ancient debris with exploding, but I did find it while mining. Uh, it took a while to set up all of these explosives though. It actually took a really long time. 
But I was finally feeling happy that we could progress this mining. Explosive mining. I'm probably never gonna get all of the hearing the explosive sounds because it's pretty cool. I wanted to expand this place a little bit more, so I had in total five hallways reaching a ton of blocks, and I lighted that sucker up. Man, that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty good. If you look at my minimap, that also looks pretty good. Saw a ton of items laying around. And I actually did got some ancient debris. Look at that. That's really dope. And a little bit more. So I got from that run, I got three ancient debris. So it was good stuff, man. It was really good stuff. I detonated the last of the TNT, but I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be lucky anymore. So, lo and behold, I still had a little bit of TNT remaining, and I blew that up as well. Man, if I was this guy in real life, listening to TNT like that, I would be really worried that my ears were sizzling. That is some scary thought, man. Exploding a little bit more TNT, never hurt nobody. And sadly for me, that was all the TNT left, and I got three ancient debris. It was good, but it definitely as hell wasn't efficient. Because I went to bed, and so many days had already passed. I was pretty stoked. My, all my ingots had almost done smelting, and it was really cool. I then took out the remaining netherite scrap that I had, and I made another netherite ingot. They look so cool. I knew I needed two more netherite ingots in order to be able to get a full set of metallurgium armor. And of course I wanted to check out if there was a better way of mining, so I found the mithril drill, but that thing was incredibly expensive, so I skipped on making that. The other option that I had was making a jackhammer. Now the jackhammer had the problem that I needed to submit a two trial quest. One of the trials was submitting a ton of pickaxes and a beacon and 30 levels. Yes, 30 levels. And the other quest was submitting a ton of blocks and again, 30 levels. So I spent all of my levels immediately on those quests and I got some bottles of enchanting that I stored away. This was going to give me just enough levels to finish the second trial experience level, which was really good. So as you can see here, I submit the levels for the trial and I wanted to get some progress done on that quest. So I made the pickaxes that I needed, I also made the blocks that I needed. After I got on the blocks, I submitted all of those and trial 2 was finished. I only had trial 1 remaining, so a diamond, a netherite and an orichalum pickaxe. Orichalum and diamond were pretty easy, I still had those laying around. I had a nether star and 3 obsidian, I just didn't have any glass or netherite. Well, I had netherite, but I couldn't upgrade it. So I had to put that quest on hold until I was smithing level 20. I'm gonna just give a quick disclaimer. During this 100 days, I never made a jackhammer or a drill ever again. I didn't even look up the recipe. I completely, it was, it was void. It was just void in my brain. I went back to another sea monument, and in this one, I wanted to loot up the Nautilus shell chest again because these things are really difficult to find and if I can just Dip in one of those get that chest get out. It would be really efficient like really efficient The elder guardians were giving me some trouble. I did find the chest pretty quickly I claimed everything that was inside and I wanted to get out of this place Now the only problem being that yeah, of course I got mining fatigue so I can't mine out I then decided to find my way out of this place, which was um, a terrible idea. I got completely lost. And then I just waited out the mining fatigue and I was gonna mine down. I don't really remember why I wanted to mine down instead of up. But hey, it is what it is. I mined down and I thought I was gonna put a waystone in the new mine shaft until I found that on my mini map. That looks green. Why is there... Why is it green? That doesn't make any sense. Is there something special over there? I'm gonna check it out anyway. After digging down, I realized that this place is where the void blossom spawns. 
So we were going to have our very first Titan battle. This is really exciting. I also got some cool vegetables, which was also really exciting. But man, this Void Blossom, I was, I wanted it. I needed it. I felt I was getting closer because some weird mobs started spawning. It was also running pretty late, so I decided to set up camp here after dispatching of all of the mobs. This would give me a safe vantage point. Now, the cave systems in this mod pack are down. I wanted all of the loot. Look at that, another beautiful boss health bar. That's so cool. It even got the colors of the Void Boss. Okay, we gotta focus. Gotta stay focused, brothers. The plant is right in front of us. I placed the waystone down in case I needed to make a quick escape. I also ate a golden apple and I was ready to engage with this thing. It shot out spikes from underneath me. I went in with my best strategy to, so far, which was the whirlwind. I immediately got his health down to half. But this thing started regenerating like, what is that? This thing is regenerating more than I can deal damage to it. Okay, calm down, I can't panic. I'm using the whirlwind and its health is going down. So my whirlwind is stronger than its regeneration. Okay, this is possible. I just gotta keep chipping away at his health, make sure my armor doesn't break, and when the whirlwind comes up again, this is my moment to strike. All right, we're going in. I am decimating this guy's health bar. And I just barely not managed to kill him. Okay, we have one more round of whirlwinds and then we're good to go. This thing is going down. It has to. On day 40, I killed the Void Blossom. Peace and serenity returned to Fantasy Minecraft. Now this thing dropped two cool drops because I saw two blue lights it dropped void thorns and a crystal fruit now i wasn't really sure what to do with those so i had to check out the just enough items menu later i first claimed the quest and it gave me two netherite scraps which was some big stuff man i also claimed the zombie slaying achievement well it's like a quest you can complete over and over again and then I went to the Titans Galore tab and I claimed the quest for the Void Blossom which gave me a Call of the Void. That is a juicy reward, that is a really juicy reward. And no I call it the Void Flower Boss, let's just quickly skip over that one. And we returned home, where the Call of the Void was stored immediately inside my chest and after placing everything inside of my automated smelter, I was ready to take it easy yeah we were gonna chill for the remaining of day 50 i was gonna check out some crafting recipes listen to some music and the first thing i started with was the void thorn so you can make an earth dive spear with it which has a really cool ability and you can make a rechargeable ender pearl now there was another weird drop that i needed to make the rechargeable ender pearl so that had to wait for now Maybe I was gonna make it. And I placed down my first trophy of this mod pack, and that is the Sentinel trophy for opening a hundred pre-generated chests. It was really cool. Then I needed to do an armor repair run, and I repaired my chest plate, my helmet, my leggings, my boots, and I decided to use one more metallurgy ingot on that chest plate because I definitely didn't want to lose that one. I also needed to repair my claymore and my car mod pickaxe. So those were the two things that I did in the meantime. And after that, I checked out some more recipes. The Heart of the Sea, you could make some weird diamonds with that can make a cool armor set, a prismarine chest plate, you can make a conduit. So pretty useful item, pretty good drop. Then the weird eye, well, you can make some cool end game gear with it. And it was all looking like Chinese. And there was also a blackstone golem fist and I really was not sure what this all was. I had to figure it out a little bit later down the mod pack, but the Blackstone Fist is from a boss in the Nether. The first next boss we had to take was the Old Champion's Remains, because as you remember, we made that Moonstone Compass, and that Moonstone Compass was going to guide us to that boss fight. So that is what we will do in the next 10 days. Well, in the next couple of days. I was hoping to get that really fast. But, as always, we ended up our day with taking a good nap after checking out some more recipes and I made another netherite ingot. Peace and serenity was feeling really cool. We were actually pretty far into this mod pack already. I was stocked on 
Totems of Undying stocked on gear. We had good weaponry. And now we just needed to get out and kill those bosses. With the Moonstone Compass in hand. Wow, my mic is still far away. What is this? With the Moonstone Compass in hand, I was going to explore to find the old ch champion's remains. And we leveled up our stamina. So after ascending, you can complete quests, which in this case or ordered me to do a thousand or two thousand jumps. And I got more skill points, which is awesome. I then used my weaponry in order to find this prison's quarters and you already know what we're gonna do in this prison quarters we're going to rush as fast as possible to that vine location we'll use this vine to create the climbable beanstalk and then once we're inside we are going to kill this config device con conjunct device man i still miss up that name first we whirlwind it and then we blast it down with magic after you blast it down, it will start doing its last ditch effort to kill you, but that's no problem. We're gonna take this easy, it's just W's baby. And this time, we killed it in time before the fire got to it. So we get that experience and just wait for it, it just has to hit, here it goes, almost, there it is, that is the big one we immediately maxed out our smithing so we were going to be able to make a netherite gear and upgrade it to metallurgium we finally had a bye have a great time yeah let's not talk about that elevator i made a wait waystone waypoint where i got to the furthest point with the moonstone compass it's very important to keep track of these because if i lose my way with this moonstone compass i am probably never gonna find it back I upgraded my chest system so we had a lot more open spaces and I took out three netherite. Now I wanted to work towards that jackhammer so I needed to submit a netherite pickaxe. So that was the first thing that I did. Now I was sure that this was going to give me exactly just straight that jackhammer. I thought it, I was just going to receive it if I did the two quests. Yeah, well, um, yeah, it's not, it doesn't work like that. First, I will make my netherite leggings and my netherite helmet, and then I upgrade them to metallurgium. Look at that beefy helmet, five armor, holy, nine armor, oh my god, we were dripping, we were totally dripping in metallurgium gear, it is amazing. Just look at my guy. Yeah, we've already gotten so far into this mod pack. It's insane. I also made that beacon that I still had to submit for that quest of the jackhammer. And I finally did all the quests for it. So now I need to submit 5 Oracallum blocks, 9 netherite and 50 levels. And then I could get a jackhammer. It is the ultimate pickaxe in this mod pack. But my goodness, 9 netherite ingots. I'm just gonna make a metallurgium ingot first, and uh, we'll see about that, uh, yeah, about that jackhammer later in the mod pack. After making another metallurgium ingot, I was feeling great. Now, the only thing that we were missing still was that mending. We needed a ton of mending, and I didn't have that yet. So that was definitely one of the things I put on the list. I also upgraded my armor sets with some extra enchantments. I also put Aqua Affinity on the helmet, I put some extra protection on my boots, and I got some extra unbreaking that I needed to use on my things. And my Claymore got Leech 3, which is really good. It's like a life-stealing item, so it's definitely a must-have if you're playing hardcore. I then went back to that last prison quarters I did, I collected my waystone, and we were back exploring in the wide world. And it never gets old to be a Beyblade. I mean, come on, man. The OGs know that Beyblading your way through the world is the way to go. I did a little bit more water exploration, but I quickly went back to land because I'm not so much of a fan. Well, hello there. That is the old champion remains. We were really close. Okay, I immediately put down my waystone and I started going ham on this guy. He was actually not taking as much damage as I thought he would, so I was starting to panic a little bit. 
Now it was going pretty fast, but this guy was still scary. Like, really scary. He gets resistance too sometimes, like a passive effect. So I'm not really sure. Ooh, that's a big tackle. We need to be careful that this guy doesn't stun lock me. Alright, I was taking my distance and I wanted to use my arcane staff if the opportunity rose. And for the rest I was using my claymore. This thing had a lot of reach and I had the whirlwind ability, which was really good. I also had Void Strike on it, so I was hoping I could get him easily with that Void Strike. Sometimes I dealt a ton of damage, which was really good. He was almost down for the count and I whirlwinded one more time. Frenzied Shade immediately spawned and this is the thing that I gotta look out for. If I am not careful, this thing will run straight through me. But it was creepily silent. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This thing likes to lurk in the shadows like a stalker. This is this is one scary boss, man. I know he deals a ton of damage, so I am I'm taking it slow and steady, using the whirlwind to have additional mobility to just not get locked in his withering chain cuz that is that is death right there. It was difficult to get this guy, but once you get him close enough, he will spawn three additional frenzied shades. And this is where things start to get very chaotic. They're everywhere using their abilities. They're just shooting straight, withering beams towards you, and they explode. I was doing pretty good. I had not lost a single health bar yet, and I was feeling very confident. Every now and then, I was able to deal some damage. The Frenzied Shade and here lies the Champion's Grave. Those quests were completed and I finished off the Frenzied Shade. I got the drops and I got further than my last attempt. So it was worth it to play this mod pack one more time. The last time I died on day 30 while I tried to kill this Frenzied Shade and I... Well, that didn't end so well. But this time we conquered him, which is really awesome. I claimed two more quests and the first chapter of the Titans were done. We were making really big progress in the mod pack. I love it. So after claiming a little bit more quests, I checked out what I could all make with the soul that I just got. And the Gale Force looked to me like the most, well, the coolest weapon, actually. I just let these two treasure chests pop. And it really never gets old to hear all that popping sound. I made the cage for the Gale Force and I started submitting all the items. I needed three Moonstones which were the biggest crafting ingredient of the other items. But I still had those laying around. So after submitting everything I got the Gale Force. And this thing is supposed to give you a jump or will launch you pretty much. And then give you a huge speed bonus. So it does indeed launch you and gives you a ton of speed. But it is very short, it is very very short. That is what I found was really sad, but you can launch yourself pretty high with this boat, which is pretty cool. It was more like a vanity item, I knew I was never going to use it in actual battle because it's kind of impractical. I did also upgrade that chest plate, so we were rocking with full prop 4 unbreaking 3 armor, and it was good. I did a ton of things, and I needed to take a quick nap. After my quick nap we were on day 43 and it was time to finally make a storage place for all my different eyes because I wanted to have a good overview of all the eyes that I had already collected to go to the end dimension. Now these eyes are not easy to collect, they are very difficult. Some of them spawn in structures as you'll see later we'll try to find a ice temple and well sometimes you're just not lucky, sometimes they just aren't there. and. Those structures are pretty rare. So it is quite the hefty task to collect all of those eyes. Now later on I will figure out you can craft some of the eyes, but right now I didn't know about that. I towered up outside of the old champion remains and I was back exploring. When I got trapped in snow and I started dying of frostbite, which I did not know was possible. Quite scary if you ask me. I found the ice temple and I was ready to jump down. Um, kind of forgetting that there's TNT. And everything blew up. Sadly for me it also blew up a chest and I believe that one held the ice eye. Which is quite sad. Anyway I collected everything that I could from these chests and the blood moon rose. Now 
I made my way to a nearby village in order to well, shelter from the Blood Moon. And I found a village where there was a ton of guards, so I was pretty safe for the night. I looted up all their collectibles and I explored out in the water. Because you know zombies can't swim, right? Nah, I'm just kidding, there's no zombies that can swim in this mod pack. I explored another tower and I found some more witches and an evoker. Now the witch is pretty easy to kill, the evoker as well, but the problem is the fixes. The fixes are, oh, they're a menace. I explored deep until the morning time and the blood moon settled. I found this weird ice skeleton structure and I wasn't sure what to think of it, but I looted it anyway. There was also a chest, but it didn't hold anything great. I found another snowy biome and I thought this would be my chance to find the ice eye. We'll see if it works. I found another ice temple and I tried to be more careful this time. Getting rid of all the... Yeah, well, never mind. Never mind. It just explodes anyway. Oh, man, these things are... Oh, they're a pain in the ass. I did find ice chests. And maybe I thought this could hold an eye, but I didn't find it. So I'm pretty sure these chests cannot hold the ice eye or snow eye. I wasn't feeling discouraged, so I continued on exploration. Because this was my world. And I was going to conquer it one way or the other. I found an illager outpost. Now I knew that there was an eye that is dropped by evokers and it is the magical eye. Now you, one of the ways you can get evokers to spawn a raid, I was going to try and get that magical eye. I immediately started killing every single thing that lived in my side of vision, my field of vision. Uh, sadly for me, there was no evokers that dropped an eye. So I left that raid alone and ooh, that is pure luck oh my goodness we got another old champion remains okay where is this thing i want to get it i want to raid this place i want to loot everything that's inside and i want to get revenge on that frenzy chain i will kill every single champion's remains i will find it will be my life goal all right yeah knock your shield man i'm gonna knock your brains out Wait, why is this guy barely taking damage? This guy... Oh, resistance too. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure, buddy. Stop. Start blocking. You ain't got nothing on me. Using my Storm Mix Sword, I was able to chop down his bones and deal some really hefty damage to him. Although this guy is a pretty cool fight, he does have a lot of stun locks. And if you don't have good armor, you need to be very careful of this dude. He has big swings, big attacks. He deals quite a bit of damage. Remember, I'm almost in full metallurgy gear. So this guy can dish out. He can dish it and he can take it. Luckily for me, I had two swords that were both slicing through bones like butter. Especially that whirlwind. It's a lifesaver. I was just waiting on that frenzied shade to spawn because that is when the real battle begins. This is just the warm. -up. He's the stepping stone. Alright, killing that guy and the frenzied shade spawn back to my claymore in order to do my strategy I used last time. I got some good hits on that frenzy chain in the beginning and I went into third person view. I was not gonna let this guy sneak up on me no matter what. The additional frenzy chain spawned and it was absolute chaos. I got withered and trapped in their magical beams but I was dodging and weaving everything that I could. Using my whirlwind I looked for the nearest frenzy chain and I actually found the right one. Down he goes. I collected both the Lord Soul and the other item and we were gaming. I took down this guy so professionally you'd almost think I'm a real Minecraft YouTuber. Alright, I got the Drogner and I was ready to claim the quest. I got some additional quests as well for finding some random loot and I got another treasure chest. And you, everybody loves these treasure chests, man. Come on. Back on top, I was exploring for life because there was one more structure that I really wanted to find. First, I raided this weird looking temple and I got a wither chestplate, which looks really dope. It has really bad armor stats, but it looks really cool. The sun was setting fast on day 45, so I wanted to explore as much as I could before heading off to bed. I did find another portal, but something seemed bugged. 
because I couldn't enter this portal. I tried spending the rest of the night uh, looking how to fix that, but I couldn't fix it. So on day 46, I went to another ice biome because I still had to find that frozen eye. And I found a giant structure instead. I wasn't really sure what to think of this structure, and it gave me a ton of lag spikes because of all the water particles. But there were chests inside, there was some type of, you know, like storage like item inside i don't know what it was this there wasn't really that much like to do in this tower so i i just dipped honestly if i knew what i was talking about then i would have stayed in this tower and put a waystone there because this is the tower of the lich king and yeah well i i definitely have to find one later but i forgot that it's that tower well i didn't know at the time I looted up two more ice chests in the near vicinity and I wanted to check out that lodging house that I found. Now it is a quite beautiful house actually, I think it's really pretty built. If I didn't already have a location for my house, which would be weird by day 46, then I would have taken this as my house, like honestly, this is a pretty cool place. The bed looks awesome. Props to the guys who built the pre-generated structures, honestly. I did place my sleeping bag outside to honor and respect to the people owning the home and the next day had begun i climbed that tower because i knew this place held a paraglider and i've read online that the paraglider and the cloud in the bottle are a sick combination to run with. so i claimed my paraglider and apparently it went into the backpack slot and I know I'm putting it in every other slot beside the backpack slot, but let's not talk about that. We're just gonna skip over that one, yeah. I put the backpack in my hotbar, and it was it was an okay way to run things, just to have the backpack in the in, in the hotbar. And I really wanted to try out this paraglider combo. And also, paragliding looks really sick in third person, so that is one of the things I could cross off of my bucket list in these 100 days. Just look at this. It's so cool. It looks so cool. Paragliding mouth pack. There was also an observ observatorium and another illager tower. So I went straight for this illager's head and I claimed all of the riches inside. So I got a thief belt and I got a smite 3 book. Pretty nifty stuff. I then went to the observatorium and there were so many pre-generated barrels inside. I... Whew, I quickly went through all of them, but there wasn't any good loot. There was a couple of emeralds, there was this totem of uplifting, nothing too crazy. I really did wish I took that helmet with me, because that is what decreases villagers' trading prices. If you see that straw hat, take it with you. The observatorium didn't help, didn't hold anything else, so I had to find a new point of interest. Because there was, there was one more boss that I really wanted to find ASAP, and that is the Resurrection Knight or the Cathedral of Resurrection. First, I looted up this other Ice Pyramid because I thought it was finally time. Finally time to have it not explode and claim, claim everything. So I started building around. I wanted to place the water away so that cannot explode. And I finally did it. I looted up an ice structure without making it explode. I thought this was it. This was my moment to shine. I was just going to find the eye and I was just going to dip. Of course, this pyramid does not have a fucking eye. Ah! It did have a cool katana. Okay, I'm happy again. Katana is a weeb's best friend. You can upgrade it to a monster katana, and with four netherite, you can upgrade it to a dark katana. But I wanted the Hattori's katana. That thing is sick, and it has an ability to slash through your enemies in front of you, which deals 20 damage. Quite big. So I wanted the Hattori katana, and I ditched this katana. I started upgrading my resistance, because that was the next skill that I wanted to max. So then we had health, strength, and resistance and those things were gonna be maxed I was gonna be invincible unkillable or at least I thought wait until you see what happens at the resurrection chambers you'll be surprised another prison quarters and you guys already know the drill we rush to the vine room we place the vine we climb the beanstalk we go down to the boss and we absolutely decimate him stood no chance just dead. We get the big levels. 
we get the loot and we level up our skills it's the way we roll efficiency we take the elevator back up again and we get the hell out of there seven more levels into endurance and we were almost maxed yeah that's how fast these things can go when i got back to the world though it was already nighttime so i went to bed and the next morning is when shit went down i heard magic all around me i didn't know what to think and all of a sudden there was a whole army of these magical warriors and they dealt, dealt damage they dealt an insane amount of damage I whirlwinded because I was not gonna... I was gonna stand my man. Okay, I'm not gonna stand my man. I'm gonna run away. Hell no. These things are bursting through my health. Holy. Magic really is something strong in this mod pack. I went to the near, nearest village. And I made a waypoint for that. I made it the furthest village. And I needed to take a breather at home. Because holy. Man, that was a scary ambush right after I slept. I repaired my mithril boots and I stored away a ton of the stuff that I'd gotten in my travels. I was really happy with that simple storage mod because it is an absolute lifesaver. I also made a palladium chest which I was going to put all the coolest armor and artifacts and weaponry inside of that I found in this mod pack. It's kind of like an overview chest to highlight some of the things that I found and I wanted to repair all of my metallurgium armor. And for some reason, I was unable to repair my chest plate. This was giving me, well, it was giving me stress actually, because if I could not repair my metallurgium armor, then at some point I was going to run out of, well, run out of options pretty much. I needed to get mending very quickly. It's going to be trouble otherwise. On day 48, I explored a little bit more. I felt that I needed to find this cathedral, which I did. This is the Cathedral of Resurrection. Now inside of this cathedral there is a statue, an altar and two, well pretty much two sides. Now the altar will activate when you walk towards it and I wasn't really sure what was happening at the time. So I claimed the chests and I looked at the lectern and oh my god that is some, that is some Minecraft enchanting table right there. I don't understand any of that. There were a ton of books which were talking about the Dark Moon, the Armor Stone, and Lord of the Moonlight, which was pretty much Chinese to me. I couldn't understand anything of it. And I checked out the other books which also had the Minecraft enchanting table. So we were not any any step further. I did look on the wiki later after I found this chung Chungus. <laughs> Big Chungus Emerald. <laughs> And I wanted to scale this this tower because I saw there was obsidian on top of this guy's head. And uh, why would somebody put a barely craftable, well, barely mineable block on top of a statue? Oh yeah, that's a chest. Oh damn, that's a netherite ingot right there. Holy, awesome. Okay, damn, that's really sick. I knew people said there was something on top of there, but I didn't know it was a netherite ingot. I consulted the wiki on how to spawn this moonlight boss and I figured you have to get a lost soul and right click the altar to use it. And that's when the returning knight spawned. This thing was an absolute menace. I spawned my iron golem and this thing spawned much more mobs and it was very intimidating. Oh my goodness. I used my whirlwind to mow down the mobs and these mages seemed to be shooting some kind of beam to the returning knight. I wasn't sure what it was. My iron golem was putting in some work, but this dude is so scary. That sound, man, it makes you shiver in your boots. I was using aerial combat, ground combat, the whirlwind. I was using my stormic sword. And this guy was just making bell sounds all over. He had a thousand health, so this was not an easy task. This guy was pretty beefy. And for now, it seemed like he was doing not too much damage. But that was all about to change very soon. And that's when it happened. I was just whirlwinding and I didn't look at my... Oh my god! Holy shit, this guy deals damage! Oh my! Half a heart. I was wielding my claymore. If I had one more damage point dealt to me there, that would have been end of the series. Over. Halfway through. Okay. Gappled up, back in business. I needed to kill this guy ASAP. He was smashing his bell down. I wasn't having none of it. One more whirlwind. 
and it was done. Chapter 3, The Beauty of Hell started. We completed the second chapter in our storyline. And I immediately placed my bed down and went to sleep. Man, let the loot stay there for a second, I need to rest my bones. This was insane. I claimed his nightfall hammer, which is really sick. Which means I can use his ability and summon mobs when I kill mobs. And an Arkan Stone. Now this Arkan Stone is going to be really important later on in the mod pack. I also claimed the quest for the returning knight and I got two more netherite scrap. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Chapter 3 had started. This was the villager chapter as I'd call it. So we needed to interact with 10 villagers. And I needed to take a breather man. Claim the quest for the returning knight. And just take a breather. That was a really packed night. Like that was... That was insane. I went to a nearby village and observed a Haster cultist. Which gave me the quest for strange locals, which was also still in chapter 1, but it was optional. So I called this place the cultist village and I wanted to get a little bit more into the Miskatonics mod pack? Or was it Call of Cthulhu? Not 100% sure again. But I needed a Necronomicon. With the Necronomicon I also needed an altar and then we could get into the nitty gritty of this mod. Now, the yellow serfs, there's pretty much like different divisions that serve different gods and I found the yellow serfs, which were pretty cool, but I needed to make a sculptor, right, and I needed to make an altar, and I needed to get spells, and uh, it was a little bit more of a difficult mod pack to get into, but I first wanted to get the altar. So I made an, uh, an atame, and I needed to strip some logs. Right outside my base, luckily, I had a couple of logs remaining that were untouched and I could just strip them. I also stored away my nightfall and then I went and traded honey, that's what I needed. I needed honeycombs and string in order to make the candles and then I could finalize making this stone altar, which hopefully allowed me to get further into the mod pack. After making those slabs, I created the altar and I was going to place it next to the bewitchment altar. And I gotta say, that block looks really cool. I knew I needed to place my Necronomicon on top and whoa, look at this, look at this. Looks like a MMO RPG skill GUI. Just started clicking random things and I didn't understand anything of it. I also didn't consult the wiki, maybe I should have done that. But I wanted to work towards that mending ASAP. So I scouted out a couple of villages in order to see if they had any librarians. Because librarians give the mending enchantment. And I also put a waystone, well, a waypoint on my minimap for that giant trading village. Because, well, if there was going to be a librarian somewhere, it had to be there. But we made a quick stop at this random portal that I found. And using my scythe, I was going to take down this boss. Because you gotta say, the scythe looks really dope, man. Just slicing through this guy, just slicing through. I knew I said I was going to take it easy, but, you know, when you see this this mob you know it drops a ton of loot and a ton of experience and that means we could do our resistance we were one level away but I spent it on trading instead because trading was the next item on the list back in the overworld I took out my sleeping bag and I took a little nap I ate up and I was exploring the world with my side in hand and with my paraglider on top I mean you can't lie, this paraglider looks really sick with a scythe combo. Arriving in this village, some strange event occurred. I got darkness and these villagers were talking about some lighting up of obsidian and an alchemist book and some really weird stuff. Wasn't really sure what they meant, but I thought this could be a good trade village and I could get a deal out of them. Back at home, I enchanted my scythe and I got Unbreaking 3, which was good. Later, I would put some other stuff on it. I also got an Infinity Book, which was big. That's a big book. I also got Radiance 3, which gives you a regeneration pool whenever you hit or shoot something. Well, it has a small chance to spawn it. And I also added that Unbreaking 3 to my spell stat. I further enchanted my scythe and things were starting to look good. I repaired my claymore and I repaired my staff. 
I then made a lectern because I really needed to get a mending villager. That was one of the things that was on the top of the to-do list. Cole definitely did not want to become a librarian. That much was sure. So I had to th start thinking creatively about this issue. I needed to get a couple of villagers around my base or inside of my base so I could set up a little trading place pretty much that makes it accessible. I took this villager in the boat but I didn't realize that yeah there's a lot of ground to cover to my base look at that stuff. That was not a good idea with the boat it was it, yeah it was not gonna work. I put two points of interest on villages that were closest by my base and I wanted to use the rail system. So I was gonna make a few rails and I was going to get those villagers over to my base that way. This wandering villager had some pretty cool traits which get me a lot of experience and I leveled up. And then I started making rails. Now I was kind of in need of a lot of iron. It didn't seem like I had enough iron to make the, all the rails needed for this project. But you could also use quadrillion and I still had a bit of quadrillion left. That's when I saw I still had a ton of iron blocks. Now, this allowed me to make a ton more rails. I had two, three, four stacks and a little bit of rails. And I thought this would be enough. Well, spoiler alert, the villagers are much further away than I would think. And yes, I know I'm not putting powered rails yet because um, I forgot. <laughs> But I'll put the powered rails later when I figure it out and then we'll be all good to go. I made some extra bridges, I did some excavation, and I made a small hub where all the rails would come together if I needed the second village. I then did some more excavation and I found the, well that guy was called a nitwit, but I found the hasters. After that I realized that I needed to make powered rails. You'll see soon when I realize it. For now, I first had to go into the mines and get a ton, 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 ton more iron. And after getting a lot more iron, I was ready to put it all in my alloy forge, which was going to speed up the progress as it smelts down a ton of ingots at once. I went to bed and I took a nap, and the next day I was feeling good. This is the only time you'll see good quality of recording, because that's when I'm standing still, so enjoy that. I made a lot more rails and I kind of forgot to make minecarts. <laughs> Such a smart idea that I don't make minecarts. Anyway, I continued my rail plan up until I reached the village. Now I needed to find villagers who would be suited best to be in my village. So I first trapped this guy in his own house and he looked like a prime candidate for transportation. I dug out some stuff underneath him, I wasn't really sure how to do this, but I just started putting rails down. And I figured if I could just put one minecart down, he'll get caught in the minecart eventually. Like I didn't have too much to worry about though. So I let him go down and that's when I realized, yeah, you need minecarts if you want to get these guys. So I made a couple of minecarts back at home and I took out some blocks because I was going to start on that villager build. I was gonna make a little shack out of blackstone bricks right next to my house and I started excavating a little bit of dirt. Then I started building the outlines of the base. It was gonna be a simple boxed base pretty much with an open hatch on the top. Because I have that cloud in the bottle I can double jump and that is the easiest way to have the villagers stay inside and have a way for me to go outside. This project took much longer than I thought, like it took a whole day to set this up. Then I wanted to find the middle of the room and I tested out if my system works and it worked. So I put down my trap doors and it was looking pretty neat. Now I needed to light up this room in order for mobs to not spawn in this place and I wanted to add a little nice floor. I killed the bee in the progress, hashtag save the bees, I'm sorry about that one, and I put the floor down. Uh, yeah, I uh, ran out of blocks. So I used some other blocks. Uh, which I was hoping that would not look ugly and it looks okay, but I ran out of blocks again. Yeah. Let's just start decorating the sleeping place. That might fix the issue, maybe? Yeah, no? Okay. I put the waystone down and I called it my trading hall because this would be my official trading hall. And then I went to bed because, yeah, days are flying by. They're growing fast as hell. 
I then took the minecart and yeah that's as far as I get so I definitely need powered rails luckily I did have a ton of gold and a ton of redstone from mining because I never used it for anything else so I was easily able to make a ton of powered rails and then I started placing them all around in order that they would definitely not get stuck because that would be the worst case scenario if my villagers got stuck on the rail and then died because a zombie nommed on them nom, nom, nom. not a good idea though so back at the village I placed down the last couple of powered rails I powered them and I was ready to transport this guy first villager was going home come on I just need to power that rail all right and then put the minecart down and we should be good to go Okay, why is he not getting stuck? I had to do some MacGyvering because I needed to jump in with him. And there we go, he was off. Yeah. It was looking good. I immediately wanted to find another villager to put inside my base. And that priest was looking juicy. I don't say that often, but it is what it is. So, I immediately put a minecart down and I started giving them help. They were going in. Hoppa! Wait, no, no, okay, there we go. Yeah, he's off. We're good to go. Come on, priest, get inside the cart. We got stuff to do, man. He really does not... Ah, there we go, okay, okay. All right, three villagers were on the way to my base. That was a good start. I also... Wait, why are they coming up? What the hell is this? Okay, get in the minecart and I will... No, uh, going the wrong way. All right, uh, break this, break that. I need to find a way out they cannot get stuck. Alright, alright. Take this minecart and I'm gonna go in it myself. No, they're all coming back! Oh, this is a mess. Okay, no, it actually worked. We're off. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that was, um... I think I could have done that way more efficiently. I just have never done this. Like, this is the first time I'm making a villager outpost. They all got stuck. <laughs> which was a pretty funny sight uh yeah well break the mine carts and let's get them is this guy stuck no okay i need to get him out of that place that's not good the double jumping gate does work pretty good all right you go inside before you get eaten by mobs and you have a couple of deals okay come on cleric Give me some good deals. What I want out of a cleric are deals for ender pearls. That's a big one. Big one. Ah, there we go. He's got ender pearls. Sick. This is absolutely sick. After trading a lot, this guy also traded a rabbit's foot for an evil eye. And the evil eye is one of the eyes that we need to go to the end, which was pretty crazy. He did have some trades for gold and for glass bottles. So after sleeping, I wanted to put those in a chest in the villager trading hall. And I also got this villager hat, which reduced prices by an incredible amount. I was actually really surprised by how much it lowered it down. Because I could trade one gold for one emerald. Sick? Absolutely sick. I still needed to find a good librarian though. No mending yet. Yeah, exactly. Just what you said. Alright, I had a fletching table that I needed to add to the pl plethora of professions that I had because a fletching table will allow me to trade sticks for emeralds and sticks are really easy to get in the big village I claimed a ton of beds and professions well profession blocks and after raiding it it looked like well actually it looked like a really cool village from the top yeah this is still the place that I spawned in all right, I added all of these extra professions and I was gonna place down a ton of extra beds. These guys need professions, beds, food, and well, yeah, not die. And if you have all of those, you can start breeding them. I put the chest down and I started dumping in items that were essential to my trading. So I added some books, I had some gold and some glass, and I wanted to do a little bit of farming. Look at that. Ah, there is no auto collection when you right click. Okay, I need to make a bigger farm if I want to get some wheat. I was gonna give my guys bread because that is the best food source for these villagers. And well, as growing bread is not as easy as it seems. I added some extra expansion of the farm to my base and I thought it would look really cool if there was just a bunch of grown wheat on top of there. It seemed like a pretty cool plan. 
I need to add a water block as well, but I completely forgot about that. And then I slept next to my villagers. I was gonna show them some respect and sleep in the same place they sleep at. I then dropped all of the bread and this guy just jumped straight on top of it. He looked hungry. That guy was mad hungry. I heard a ton of zombies dying outside. I think that was the iron golem taking care of them. I then took a rail ride to the new village. And I collected another farmer. This guy and that guy were gonna give me trades. They needed to give me emeralds, which I could use for mending. Man, my life is gonna be so much easier when I get some mending. Why are you getting stuck? Oh my god! What is this? Get out of there! Stop dancing around like you're at a disco party and get out! Let my villager go home. His new home. He will be much happier. Get out of there. Come on. Oh, okay, there we go. That is much better. Alright, I made some extra bread to sustain my villagers because more mouths to feed meant more bread to give around. And I shared the bread amongst those two. I then claimed the minecarts from the other villagers and I made my great escape. Everybody went to bed because it was already sitting towards nighttime, so I thought, hey, I'll go to bed as well. This time I slept in my own bed. I'm not gonna sleep around them too much. I then made my diamond boots because I wanted to upgrade to full metallurgium. Full metallurgium. I'm ta we talking business, armor business. I needed a little bit of extra wood and this chopping mod is really useful. Big trees go down so easily. And yeah, you can never get old of flying around with a paraglider. It looks cool. I found another mine cells dungeon and I needed that in order to enchant my boots. So I went straight towards it. You know, you already know we spammed it with some magic with our new one that had some spell power. And we reached level 100! Let's go! Oh yeah! Level 100, big 100. We're talking Club 100, level 100, baby. We got a rare candy as well. I, I, when I right clicked it, it. Yeah, it leveled me up. So, uh, Club 100! <laughs> level 100, baby. Alright, let's go. Wait, I reached level 100? I got. Ooh! That's, that, that's nice! Boss rush? What is this? Bosses now have strength, resistance, and health boost, recommended arena platform, spawn point near dying. Wait, there's a boss rush mechanic in this? I gotta check that out later. First, I spent the extra two points on trading. And yeah, we ascended our next skill, which was resistance. We were starting to get really strong, dude. Really strong. Then I went to sleep because the taste were flying by. As I'm telling you guys, it's going. we're going to overdrive right now. Trading in overdrive, they're making love in overdrive, we are going in overdrive, it's... This pack is getting wild, we're wilding out. Metallurgian boots, we're wilding out, we're gonna enchant them. my inventory, so... We needed to make a quick trip to the nether in order to get some soul sand. I made a shovel fit for the task and I started digging all of the soul sand that I could find. We needed about 21 soul... no, 23... 22... 22 soul sand. If we wanted to get this quest done. After a little bit of mining, I collected some extra soul sand and we were done. I put my furnace on souls on the lost soul, which is really important. Switch your furnace output. And I went to bed. After going to bed, I woke up. Because that's what you do. Or at least I hope I do. And I needed to get the lost souls out of my auto smeltery. But they still had to smell and it took a little bit of time. A little bit more... There we go, okay. 27 lost souls. We submitted the task for the lost souls and we were gaming. I claimed the filling cage and I needed some fur glass, some moonstone, some sticks, the lost... The Lord Soul? Wow. The Lord Soul I had already submitted, which was good. So then I took out some fur glass, I submitted those. And I thought the second one was a fur glass as well, but it needed to be a moonstone. There we go. We got the cage and we got the Leviathan Axe. And this thing is sick. You apply permafrost on enemies post hit. Permafrost enemies explode when they die. And throwing your axe causes permafrost. 
It's so cool. Ooh. 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 This is sick. Oh my god. It returns. Automatically returns. Okay. Yeah. We're running with this one. A little bit more trading later. And a little bit more trading later. I was finally set for the day. I was feeling really satisfied. So. I committed the felony. I needed to get this villager out of the base. Bad deal. Ah, it should be fine. Yeah, about that, it was not fine. You'll see later what I mean. But that was a bad idea to kill that villager where everybody could see it. Okay, quick disclaimer. I know it says day 60 to 68. And yeah, we're going to the nether quite a lot. And I lost track of time, dude. Honestly. It was difficult to track time in the nether. I wrote it down on my piece of paper which day I was on because I kept track of time. But during the editing, I got I got completely lost, man. So for now, we tamed this bird and we were best friends forever. So just bear with me on that clock time thing. Man, I know the clock, the clock glitches out in the nether. I can't help it, man. Come on. But look at that bird. That's a cool bird, right? I mean, come on, man. It has even lightning effects. Like, this is so cool. I can double jump up to him. Gave him some diamond armor, and this dude was absolutely... He was dripping. Dripping in gear, man. I placed some extra pedestals because we we had to rush that mending villager. We had to absolutely rush that mending villager. And, oh my goodness, look at these trade prices. Oh, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I did decide to kill another villager because I needed to make space for another. Oh, that was also a bad idea. I'm making some really bad life choices in my village right now. Man, public execution does not go down well in this place. Holy. I probably even can't say that on YouTube or I'll get demonetized. Well, let's see if it works. Um, I can describe it as something else. Maybe trial by fire? Maybe that works? I mean, for now it seems to be working. The only thing that was going up were the prices of the villagers. Not my monetization. Sadly. Yeah. I decided to take out my revenge on one of these illagers. And I sniped him down with my Kratos' axe. Like, dude, this thing is cool. Look at those explosions. Man, this mod pack's got me really feeling like I'm playing an RPG. It is so awesome i know i'm saying this a lot but you guys should really play this mod pack for yourself you can take the bird and fly up to these weird floating villages and there was a space not a spaceship an aircraft there was this balloon ship and man it was filled with pillagers but you know we already went down boom slapping him with the axe and shooting him down it is it is yeah it's good stuff this axe is one of my favorites and look at that, I got a bottle of enchanting and steadfast spikes. These give me knockback resistance. And it goes in the shoe slot. So now I got little claws on my feet. And oh, look at that, that's a rogue eye and kitty slippers. Creepers avoid you. Dude, this is a big item if you get it early in game. That's awesome. I also got the slicer crossbow. Looked pretty cool. But then I found even better slippers. The bunny hoppers increases the wearer's jump height. So this will stack with my cloud in the bottle. It is awesome. Also got shield of infinity chest plate and that is a really cool set. Also some wither boots. So I was going to add that to my armory. Definitely. I had to make an armory stand at some point, right? Like just a room that has all the armor sets. Yeah, it sounds like... <gasps> oh, that's a power glove. Yo, that thing gives me four damage bonus and you can equip two of those. We already got one. Dude, we are, yeah, we're, we're, we're going ham. Mining some extra obsidian because you can never have enough obsidian. After that, I claimed some quests and I got the golden conversationist. Which gave me the hmm, item ticket and a block of emerald, which was really cool actually. I then got some extra hay bales because I needed a ton more food for my villagers. And for some reason when you kill mobs, especially zombies with the axe, they turn into frost zombies? Man, this this wasn't This wasn't Game of Thrones. I was in the wrong series. I crafted up a ton of extra bread and I needed to hit the sack. 
But of course there was another lunar event that prevented me from sleeping, so I had to go like an insomniac. I claimed some quests that allowed me to go to the nether quests, and we were moving up in chapter 3. There was a couple of bosses that I had to fight, but I really wanted mending it. Oh, 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 oh. oh inflation! Oh my goodness. Okay. I definitely need to do some trading in order to get these prices down. Maybe I need to add another new villager to the mix that has some fresh prices because, oh my god, a stack of emeralds for a statue? Woo! I made some extra backpacks because I needed a ton of extra storage. My backpacks were filling up way too quickly while I was exploring. And back to the nether we went. Because we were still on the quest for <laughs> the decaying king. But I gotta say, the nether looks absolutely beautiful. This... I really want to get that, actually. I want to snipe him. Hold on, we'll need we'll need to snipe him later, but that is that is a lot of fun. Ah, there we go. Ooh, that's satisfying. All right, that's pretty cool. I gotta say the the Nether is so upgraded since like the vanilla Nether is so basic, and these upgraded Nethers are absolutely wild. I love it. It makes Nether exploration a lot more interesting. You can find dungeons, you can find spawners, many structures. Completely abandoned cities like this one, which I don't even know what was inside of these places It looked like there would be a big boss in here So I I hung around for a while and I actually found some pretty interesting Blocks like this respawn statue it I thought if I could mine it and I place it in my base and link it to myself I could respawn but it didn't work like that sadly I explored enough of that city and then I found this place. It was a big tower and I immediately started climbing up. Cause usually when there's a tower and there is spawners, there has to be some loot at the top. And I was absolutely right, there were two golden blocks and there were some chests and well, what was inside will surprise you. I got in each chest a netherite ingot. A netherite ingot in each chest. Do you know how long I spent looking for ancient debris and now I just got two netherite ing ingots and an ancient debris? Flashback. From that run I got three ancient debris. But I was pretty sure I wasn't gonna be lucky anymore. Pshoo! Structures go hard, man. And I was going harder on this goblin. Hoglin. Goblin. Hoggoblin. Yeah. I sniped some extra blazes. And I finished them off with a combo. So satisfying. The sound that the axe makes when you kill something is satisfying. Really satisfying. I explored a ton of lava lakes because I knew it was going to take a long time to find the decaying king, but man, did I underestimate how long it would take. First, I got the achievement for Hellish Paradise. So I got the Deadly Quartz Flats explored, which was good. Later, I got another achievement, but first I saw this reactor. And I already knew I had to take revenge. Spamming my axe, this guy was already down quite low. And then I spammed him with lightning. And it is so satisfying because you will die. There we go. I took my revenge on this guy who almost killed me one time. I then wanted to see what was inside of this chest, and it was another radiation shield. So, it wasn't anything too crazy. At the bottom, I also found the hazmat boots. So, I had two forts of the set. And then I fell in some lava. But, I did find the gauntlet arena. Now, if you know anything about this mod pack, this is another titan. I didn't know that at the time. So, I also didn't know how to interact with this structure, and I decided to... Something inside me said, hey, take out your pickaxe and start mining that thing. So I did. And that spawned the nether gauntlet, and this boss looked menacing right from the get-go. There's an eye inside of a giant glove. And oh my god, it's coming for me. Holy. Okay. Whirlwind activated. Okay, he's way too, way, way too high up for my whirlwind. That's not gonna work. Oh, now it works. Look at that damage. Alright, double jump goes hard with the claymore. Look at that. 
taking out my axe through some range damage while my whirlwind is on re on cooldown getting in some basic hits and this guy was almost down for count when he started blinding me and shooting me with an all destroying laser this was getting pretty intense this guy had a couple of tricks up his sleeve but i wasn't afraid i could dodge easily with this double jump and down it went Ooh, it spawns ancient debris okay that's sick and a chest all right let me claim that real quick and that one and now for the chests what do we got oh a blazing eye wait is this an eye to go to the end oh and we got a nether ruby staff we got another nether star and levels oh boy that was a juicy quest it did not give me a lord soul however it was one of the titans but not one of the main titans feeling a little bit discouraged by that i tried looking what the other titans were and it was the decaying king and this blackstone golem for this blackstone golem you need four gilded netherite shards i think it was and the decaying king once a powerful ruler spawns in the remnants of the decaying kingdom in the nether this cursed monstrosity wields the darkened blade and has many deadly attacks so we really got to be careful of this guy but anyway i wanted to find him slay him and claim his weapon i wanted to go and become the strongest being in this world i want to be all powerful we're on day 60 something and i wanted to become really powerful oh i did find this piglin kingdom though which was a really cool structure it's like a nether fortress but then with only piglins and they got different armors they even got names like this lands and the wild we got a lot of knockback and it got pretty hairy inside of this dungeon this dungeon is quite small and i have to fend for myself with my axe Later I was sniping them with my axe, which worked pretty efficiently, if I could just climb up to something that they cannot reach. And the whirlwind was... I mean, come on. Do I even need to say something about this whirlwind? It just goes hard. It's like a Beyblade with razor blades on it. I did find one of the gilded netherite shards, but I only found one, which was the issue. I wasn't sure how to get them. Later I did consult the wiki and i figured out you get them from the goblin king yeah so you need to defeat four of these structures in order to get that shard so if i ever wanted to spawn the blackstone golem i needed to get four of these things although the loot is pretty good because when i climbed up and i mined that ancient debris i also found a nethiferous head which was a rare drop because it shined yellow which was cool and I mined up, 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 and I got this. Voltaic Trident. It had a purple name, so I knew it was good. And it was made of incendium, which has a special effect. When you chuck it, it generates an explosion. Boom. Did you see that? Look at this. I'll do it one more time. Boom. Boom! Boom! Oh, dude, this thing is so sick. You can. Ooh! It got so chaotic so fast, but it is so good. Oh, look at that. It's so satisfying to use it. It didn't deal a lot of damage, but it was really satisfying. Alright, I found another Piglin Kingdom and I wanted to claim my second shard. So I put a waypoint on there and I was going to rush there ASAP. Nether traveling wasn't too difficult anymore. And I still love to make these guys explode. Ah, that's so, so satisfying. Man, the two things that are most satisfying in this mod pack are the treasure chests and making those big guys explode. Those are like hands down my two favorite sounds in the game. After I found the second piglin fortress, I got to some rooms that I'd never seen before and these held ancient debris in the middle. But it felt trapped. So I rushed immediately out of there, and the room behind me exploded. So I claimed the second one, and the room exploded as well. But I was quick enough, I was quick on my feet, I knew how to handle worse than diamond, so I wasn't gonna bother with this guy. I was just gonna run straight past him, leave him alone, he would leave me alone, and everybody would have a great time. 
Or so I thought. Should have gone back and killed him. Should have gone back and killed him. I was the bigger man. I was going home and I was gonna let it rest. Just let it rest. It's fine. All right, back at home, I needed to store away all of the spoils of war that I'd gotten in my travels in the nether. And it was quite a lot. Like, it was quite a lot. And I checked out what I could make with that blazing eye. You can make a tablet of elevation, grants you flight in the 7x7, and a blast amplifier, which powers your blocks. 30% explosion. Wow. That's pretty good, actually. But I needed some other items for it. The top item is from the Lich King, I think. And the... Explosion Enhancer is from the Obsidian Obelisk in the end, if I remember correctly. I claimed some extra quests which gave me a ton of loot. Mostly levels, but oh, we love them levels. And we were about halfway done with the nether quest line. So I went back to my villagers to see if inflation had already died down, but the government kept printing money, so yeah, that was not a thing. I did do some trading with the florist and some other villagers in order to try to take the price down a little bit, but it wasn't working. They were just making new babies and they were in inflation. It wasn't a good time. It's sad to see society decline like this. I did put sharpness 4 on that axe, which was really good. And I enhanced my claymore even further. This, this boy was getting beefy. Back in the nether, I was fresh and feeling confident that I could find the decaying king. As long as you don't give up, you are still winning. That is life advice. <laughs> I found another nether gauntlet and I wanted to take this guy down because he drops a ton of ancient debris. And I wanted to get a second blazing eye because hey, if we can make one of the two items, I want to make the other item as well. First checking this axe to see if it does any more damage with the sharpness 4, but it wasn't that big of a difference and I finished him off. Boop! One more hit and he was dead. There we go! Oh damn, this guy dropped a ton of ancient debris and quite a bit of levels. Nice! This is some good stuff. Blazing Eye acquired, ancient debris mined, hopes were still high, and I found a dungeon of soul sand. This is like the jungle temples in basic Minecraft, but in different variations depending on the dimension you're on and the biome that you're in, so it's pretty cool to see. Another insane sword that I could do absolutely nothing with. Very nice. And while exploring, I found this cool cobweb shop bow. So they, when I hit something, it covers them in a block of a cobweb, which is quite powerful, actually. I did leave it alone because I thought it was a chance to spawn a cobweb, but I'm pretty sure it was permanent. I also got um, an achievement that, yeah, tells me that I explored every single biome in this place. So you already know how long I've been searching for this decaying king, man. It was, it was not looking good. We weren't looking too sharp. But I would never give up hope, because we got a goal. And we will reach that goal. The decaying king will submit to me. I will become the new king in this mod pack. And that's when I thought I actually found something. That looked like a structure that could be from the decaying king. So I wanted to place a waypoint down and I wanted to rush there ASAP. I then did some battling with a ghast, reflecting his fireballs and chucking my axe into the air. But my aim seemed to be a little bit off, although I did the calculations and with this degree angle, it should work. Yeah, I completely missed that. Yeah, that's an absolute whiff. Okay, I'm gonna just dip and not be embarrassed anymore. Wait, what is this? Pipe dream. That's a long drop down. All right, let's go. Okay, cobwebs and what the hell are these? Pipeline sentry. Yo, these guys got resistance, absorption, and regeneration. What is this? Why? What, what is this golden apple effect? Let me... I'll just melee you. That'll work. Ceci n'est pas un blaze. Why is it French? Why is it French? <laughs> okay, it, they drop enchanted books. And there were quite a bit of sentries in this place. Things got from 0 to 100 real quick. It... <laughs> What is going on? Unlimited power! Oh shit! Okay, okay, take a breather. Wow, 
So we went from some French to an absolute hellstorm of lightning. Alright, I like this place. That was cool. I needed to find that decaying king though. All these distractions were nice, but we have to stay focused. We have to stay focused, brothers. The mission was right in front of us. Wait, what is this? This is a like a real piglin. Look at the chat. This is a real piglin village. It's got a name and everything. What? Society is getting very advanced with these piglins in the nether. Oh my goodness. I wonder if I can steal from this village. <laughs> oh my god, you can. Oh, <laughs> piglin pillage, you even get an achievement for it. Okay, that's beautiful. I love that. Okay, I'm gonna dip though because I don't really like to stay in that village. Okay, that is a cool place that I want to go to. There seems to be some kind of structure with purple. Okay. There is a ton of Wither Skeletons out there. Not sure what this place is gonna be. But I do know one thing. Whirlwind for the win. This thing is strong and it's good and it's making my life beautiful. Alright, alchemical experiments. So, I feel like this is some kind of experimental base. Could it be that they made the Wither Skeletons here? Or is there something else at play? Little to, not, to my beknownst, I was definitely not interested in the lore, but I was interested in what I literally just found. That is a soul star. And if you remember what I said a couple days ago when I reached that Lich King Tower, you need four of those to spawn the Lich King. At the top, I found the obsidian and... Whoa! Whoa! Dude, this looks, this looks gnarly! That look, wow. I'm really surprised there's an item like this in the game. Okay, let me look at that again. That is a gnarly sword, dude. What? Okay. Is this the sword they used to do the experiments? I'm gonna put it in my armory anyway. That's a cool vanity item to have. Back at home, I stored all of the stuff I'd gotten in the travels, because that's how we roll. And it was already pretty late. I definitely had to hit the sack. So it was nighttime. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> this mod pack is not giving me any rest, and it's making me go cuckoo. Okay, okay. Go to your villagers, do some trading, make yourself useful. Spend the night running around headless, not doing anything. Okay, I got a plan. We're gonna get some extra villagers inside the base. Yeah, yeah, that's a good way to keep myself busy. Okay, open up the base, and then let's go steal some villagers. There were still a couple of villagers remaining in that one base that I originally stole from, so I decided to give them another shot, and I got this other florist, and I got that guy as well. So we got two more villagers. Now my goal was, or the strategy was, that if I trade with those guys who have the low prices, then the other guys will adjust their prices to the market value. Supply and demand, right? Oh, and competitiveness. That's a, that, Yeah, that too. Felt like I was doing some Wolf of Wall Street stuff, man. And this guy was off as well to our base. There he went. We got three more trading villagers that we could use to decrease inflation. That does not sound sketchy at all. And their prices were absolutely beautiful. Equipping the hat made their prices super low. Look at this guy. One emerald. Okay, let's go. That makes me excited. Okay, we have a chance of getting that mending now. Okay, I was feeling good. I was feeling really good. I desperately needed mending. Desperately. I traded some more stones for some more other stones. Emeralds. And I felt like the prices were going down a little bit. Even if it was a little bit, it was still a win. Everybody went to bed. So I was going to head off to my base as well. No more reason to stay here. If they go to sleep, they cannot trade. And I got distracted again because this Eden Ring portal looked so awesome. I needed a ton of copper though. And I thought I had like a load of copper. Like I was absolutely stacked on copper. Yeah, I could only make like seven blocks with that so i needed to make a quick trip down to the mining alley i checked my waystones but i apparently didn't have a waystone anymore for the mine 
So I made a completely new mine inside of my base. Because that doesn't sound like a, a bad idea. Mining all the way down to bedrock, I found a mine shaft and I started digging up all of the treasures that I could find. Well, mostly copper though. We needed a ton of copper. Like copper, 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 copper. I think in total I needed 10 blocks of copper, 12 copper stairs. No, no, it's more. Uh, it's 13 blocks of copper. And I needed those amethyst crystals, which I wasn't sure how to get them. But first I made a jukebox. That is some weird music, dude. I mean, it kind of fits the look of my guy because with these night vision goggles and the Millergium armor, I look like a, a, I look like a beetle, dude. And that music disc was really weird. I started vibing to it. Okay, I'm not vibing with it anymore. I turned off the music and I checked my chest. It was time for a change of weaponry. I was going with the Nightfall. And that thing is sick. You gain haste post hit while having strength effect. You use the charge and shatter mobs ahead, that's the ability. Use while crouching to gain resistance and absorption. Oh, that's pretty cool. And we got Thundering 3, so this thing is gonna be an absolute eye catcher. I'm gonna use the bell thing and it's gonna smite down lightning as well. I'm already telling you this thing is going to be this, this thing is gonna be sick. Oh, I was so anxious to test it out actually. I did enchant it with a little bit more enchants. I couldn't put Reckless on it, but I could put the leeching on it and looting, so that was really good. And I really wanted to test it out. I really wanted to test it out. But I first had to take a nap, because swinging a giant bell like that, that cannot happen when you're not rested up. I made some more extra copper blocks, and oh my goodness, copper stairs are expensive. Six blocks for four stairs. That sounds like a really bad deal, honestly. I put some extra lava in my alloy forge and we were good to go for another couple of stacks. And I placed some extra copper inside of there. Things were looking good. Day 70 and we were hella balling. I did really want to make that portal, but I first needed to have a silk touch. Some tool with silk touch in order to harvest the crystals. Everything was going nice. We were making progress towards the stairs. We had gotten 12 stairs, so that was good. Then we just needed a little bit more copper. It's all about the copper, man. But we made another trip to the nether. Ah, uh, I love this place. Jokes, I really don't like this place. I just want to kill the bosses and get out of here ASAP. Did find another lost village, but still no luck. Oh! <laughs> Apparations! Apparations got smited, yo! Holy! That was some wild stuff! I love this hammer. Honestly love it. And we ended day 70 by finding this on the map. What the hell is that? If that isn't the decaying king's kingdom, I do not know what is anymore. Let's go there! And we were off, testing my new hammer in this nether fortress. And you gotta say, hitting stuff with a hammer this big looks really good in that thundering. Oh god. That blue guy you saw was a remnant. If I kill something with this hammer, it has a chance to spawn a minion. And last time this guy, he was spewing fire fireballs at me and man, I was gonna take revenge. And this hammer was burning through his health. Look at that. In about three hits, I dealt 60 damage. He was running away. He got him scared in his boots, dude. Look at that. Just straight running. I don't you don't you don't mean anything, man. Come on. Give me that wildfire crown. I explored a little bit more and I found this weird illager refuge thing. So that giant thing you saw on the map, well this is it. The weird thing was that you cannot mine any of the blocks. So you have to enter through the doors. Which, by the way, look very blended into the wall. So, at first I didn't even find it. A couple of skeletons inside and, well, pretty much that was about it. At the front of the cathedral, because it looks like a cathedral, there was this. E. So, yeah, I guess that's a thing. 
Anyway, when I climbed up in this cathedral, there was a giant bell and some spawners. But sadly, yeah, when you cannot break anything, I also couldn't break the spawner. So this place was... it's cool, but I was expecting a lot more for a structure that big. I continued my search and I found this nether pyramid. Now these things are trapped, so you have to be careful not to let the TNT explode. Because that would destroy your loot, of course. Not that it means much, because the loot inside is... Well, I mean, that book was pretty good. I was checking on my map because I was starting to get really lost in this place. I've, I've seen so many structures already, so I know which ones are not the Decaying King. But that looked like the Decaying King. Because I wiki, I looked it up on the wiki, and luck be told, it was. I found the Decaying Kingdom, which was so small. I mean, come on, look at that structure. That is, that's not big. I knew I had to rush towards that Decaying King, and I wanted to get him ASAP. So I got the hot tourist destinations, and we were ballin'. The Decaying Kingdom. I completed a quest for it as well, which was really cool. Rewards? Using a combination of my thundering, my basic attack, and the ability, I dealt tons of damage. Now I had to look out for that, which is the Whirlwind. That does deal a lot of damage. So I took my distance when he started Whirlwinding, and then I entered with my Claymore. And my Whirlwind does way more damage than his. He stood no chance. Kill the Decaying King. We done it! We done it! We killed two Titans of the Nether. There was only one remaining. But I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get that Titan in, in these 100 days. It was already getting pretty late. All the loot looked really shiny on the ground, and I got the Lord Soul, a Wither Heart, and the weapon. And the weapon is the Darken Blade. It heals you every mob hit, and every time the item is not on cooldown, you will also heal, which is Omnivamp. The Sword Decimation you can use to launch yourself and smash the ground, and you gain hit, you gain haste if you have strength. So, all in all, this is a really good two handed weapon. It looks awesome, but that stabbing attack? Hmm, I'm not sure if I'll like this enough to change my weapon. Hmm. It looks cool! Ah! The double jump and the ability is pretty cool, but I, I still prefer my hammer. I still prefer my hammer, though. Maybe the Lord Soul will have me able to create something even cooler. But for now, I needed to go back home. First I claimed the quest and I got another treasure chest, which is very nice. And then I claimed the quest for the Lord Soul. Of course I opened the chest right where I spawned it. And we claimed chapter 3, which gave me the option to get extra stats. So you know we went for the strength, man. We, we were gonna get ultimately strong. We wanted to be the strongest being, so we are taking strength. Then there was also story mode, but I wasn't sure how to activate that. And there was another chapter, 3.5. So that was definitely something I wanted to do. But after all my travels in the nether, I needed to make my way home. I was gonna place the waste zone, and then I could go back to the nether anyway. The explosion sound of the ability does sound pretty cool. But... That sounds so much cooler. Aw, oh, come on. Trade prices were at an all-time high. <laughs> but I did have some extra villagers. Some extra librarians. So maybe... If we were lucky enough, one of these would have the mending trade. I already had an, a name tag ready for this guy if I was gonna find him. I did see that there was a trade for clay pots. So I got a absolute buttload of clay in order to smelt it down and make bricks so I can make some extra pots out of that. I went back home and I immediately started on getting an efficient smeltery setup. So, well, it's not really a smeltery setup, but I just made like seven extra <laughs> furnaces. <laughs> I was gonna pluck them all down and then chuck enough fuel in there to smelt a stack of clay. Otherwise, if I put it into one 
furnace, it was gonna take a couple of days for everything to smell, and I was not feeling that. So after going outside, I decided to kill some mobs with this hammer. And you gotta say, third person combat looks really cool. Ooh, got a quest for killing 10 creepers though, which was really cool. And I got a skull. That's gonna be a nice addition to the outside. I claimed a little bit more clay, because I needed a ton of it. I needed a ton of emeralds. And I put everything in my furnaces. Furni? I think Furni. No, Furni is not the... Is it the real word? Doesn't matter, I'm going to bed. Oh, and one of my remnants was apparently slain by an enderman. Guy took the wrong fight. I claimed some extra quests, and I accidentally claimed all, which gave me a change of origin. I wasn't really feeling the change of origin, so I just took the human again with the 20% extra experience. But then I saw that some of the extra feats might be more interesting now. Heavily armored could be really interesting, but it gives me two more armor toughness. So I thought that it would be better to choose something else. And that's when I found this. No, not this. This. Your health point maximum increases by 20%. That is really good. I got 20% more health now. I also checked what I can make with this Lord Soul and I found the Lich Bane, which has Spellblade. While your target has over 33%, deal bonus magic damage based on fire aspect that penetrates armor. Magic damage that penetrates armor, that's big. Everything's got armor in this mod pack, I believe. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna deal four health points of true damage on top of the 11 attack damage I already have. So it's one-handed, much faster, and as strong as my current bell weapon. So it's insane, I need to make this ASAP. So I submitted everything for it and I got the Lich Bane. Now, man, the weapons in this mod pack, they look so sick. I've been telling this from the beginning, but look at that Lich Bane sword. Look at how fast this is. Yeah, and if I increase my fire aspect level on it, I think we can reach 7 or 8 points of magic damage. Claiming a little bit more emeralds with this new pot trait that I unlocked, I checked what other trades they had. And this guy has a honeycomb and some glow berries and everything, so it's, it's really cool. Ah oh man, and I still need to check if these guys have mending. I've not checked my librarians yet. I haven't checked them yet. Oh, it's so exciting. Come on. Okay, what does this guy have? 41 emeralds for- <gasps> That's mending! Oh my god! That is so good! Okay, let me put the name tag on this dude so I do not lose him. Okay, 41 emeralds is a hefty price though, but I'm willing to pay it. I am so willing to pay that price. Alright, we finally will have a full set of mending gear. That cannot break. I will never have to worry about durability ever again. Oh, it's gonna be so satisfying. I did need to get the emeralds though, so that was one thing. But I found a trade with one of my villagers that trades spruce saplings for emeralds. And these spruce saplings are pretty easy to get. I have a spruce woods right next to my base. And now I was gonna put a waystone there, so I could always come back for more. And it doubles as a wood farm, because now I can get a ton of wood as well. Back at home, I needed to store away all of the items that I've gotten. And I checked up on my bricks, because the brick smelting was going hard. To get 41 emeralds though, I needed a ton of bricks, so I'm hoping that after this brick run, I'm gonna be done with making bricks and flower pots and... Okay, bedtime. Alright, wake up. Okay, back to trading. So I got a couple more emeralds, we're on 23 right now, so we're still quite a ways off. The spruce sapling trade was big because it gave me 9, but we still needed a bit more. I got the price lowered because of the hat that I'm wearing and 31 emeralds was exactly the right amount. We got our first mending book. Look at that. Okay, my armor was running low. I needed to get mending ASAP onto this. What? Hey. <laughs> Why mending no work on my chestplate? Huh? Oh! 
Is there a bug in the game? Hold on, let me check all my other gear. Okay, it works on my helmet. Not on the chest plate. What is this black magic? What the hell? It works on the leggings, fine. What about the boots? Does it work on the boots? Yeah, it does. What is up with this chest plate? Is it because I repaired it so many times that it's unrepairable now? Man, that would be bad. Okay, I just put it on my helmet and we'll roll for, with that for now. I need to figure out how to make a new chest plate. So there is the Stardocyte, the Metallurgium, the Warden Chestplate, Amatrine, and Nether, a Gilded Netherite that I can upgrade. Wait, what is that top one? That's an Arkham Plate. It has the same armor stab. <gasps> oh, when the user is under 50% health, gain permanent resistance too? Resistance too is really strong. It needs the Arkham Stone. Oh my! We got that from the returning, uh, the returning knight. No, not the returning knight, from that, uh, bell. Yeah, wait, is it the resurrection knight? The cathedral of resurrection, that's where we got it anyway. Okay, I rushed getting netherite again because I needed to upgrade a, nether a chest plate to netherite. After that, we could add the Arkenstone onto it. This was big. Netherite chest plate completed and the Arkham plate was made. And this Arkham Plate looks pretty cool once I equip it. I did need to get another few levels to make uh, the right enchantments onto this guy. So I got the respawning rune for the Convinct Chinaeus. I'm probably butchering that name again. But we needed monster flesh, monster eyes, chains and some prison stone. We need to mine the stone inside of this prison. Then we need to smelt it down and that way we could make it. So I dug up enough stone to make a couple of respawn runes, and then I got the first one, a blank rune, some flesh, an eye, and some chains, and we got the respawn rune. This is actually pretty easy to make instead of finding new portals, I just made two of them. We're gonna kill the boss two times, claim a ton of levels. So you just go to the boss's base, and you insert it into the greystone that he spawns. And yeah, never enough. I can never get enough of the juicy experience that this guy drops. This was going to be a different type of ride though. Because this guy wanted to trade some weird ingots with me in order to give me a sacrificial sword or something. But I accidentally hit him with my hammer. So I finished him off. Now, little did I know that if you kill this guy... It will send an envoy of those guys, and oh my goodness, they deal so much damage. Alright, I was going to take the elevator up and gather my bearings, because holy, those are the guys that almost killed me a while ago. I was not messing around with these guys. I'm gonna drop my golem down there, he's gonna start doing work, and I'm gonna eat an apple, jump in, and give them hell with my Lich Bane. I was looking for all the smoke. Um, wait, where did they go? Okay, it's just, it's just the boss. <laughs> they all ran away. Do they have a despawn timer or something like that? What is going on? Okay, anyway, we finished off the boss the first time. And you know that juicy level up hit right there. Very nice. I had a couple of levels to spend, but I instantly got into the second boss. We respawned him again. And it's rinse and repeat. We're just going and going. Killing this guy every few rounds. I mean, it is the best. It's the best experience farm that I know of so far. I mean, look at that. After killing him two times, I got 63 levels. I got a ton of emeralds, which gives me more mending. And we got some extra loot like diamonds and gold and all that stuff. So I had eight points, which I spent seven off into training. And I got the luck as my new goal to work towards. We definitely needed to get our luck up for that crit damage. Juicy crit damage. I got another book and I had 34 emeralds, which means that I could get another mending book. Just had to equip that straw hat and there we go. Wait, I could get uh, almost two. The prices were dropping, my guys. We were fixing inflation in my micro village. I enchanted the Arkham Plate with protection four. And I put Sharpness 4 on my Lich Bane. It did also put Guarding Strike on there, so I couldn't get a Void Strike, which was really sad. But my Arkham Plate was looking juicy. Bag of Souls 3, Protection 4, Unbreaking 3. 
that's good. I also put an additional fire aspect on my Lich Bane, which gave my magic damage a bump. I put some extra enchantments onto my armor, and we were dripping in gear. Absolutely dripping. With fire aspect 2, my Lich Bane does 6 extra damage that negates armor. It's true damage. I upgraded the gold backpack to a bejeweled backpack, and I wanted to see if I could upgrade them to... Yeah, withered backpacks. Look at that. Double withered backpack setup. That is so much storage. Oh my goodness. And I wanted to see what that chaos orb was. Because you can make it with a withered heart, an arcan stone, and two other things. Or you can smelt it down into another netherite ingot. That's also pretty cool. But I had none of the other items, so I went to bed. And I was feeling really good. The blue moon rose, I was feeling lucky. I made a ton of extra blank runes. And I increased my chest system because we almost ran out so if I add two more chests I'll have about 160 extra free slots which is absolutely crazy simple storage mods are life dude and I started exploring I had had enough of the nether I didn't want to explore there anymore I wanted to do some exploration in the overworld and that's when I found a really cool how do you say it, like cave type of system I mean it just it looked withered, it looked like bad news, so I was really interested. When I dropped down, it showed me some glowy, veiny thingies, and it continued to get more lush as the more I went down, which, it piqued my interest. There was also flowers all around, which signaled that there was a Void Blossom down there, and I really wanted to kill another Void Blossom. I don't think I will ever get tired of killing those Titan mobs, they're really fun to fight. Especially this Void Blossom, because it's a plant that doesn't move. <laughs> it's kind of like kicking a person in the wheel. No, I'm not going to say that. I am definitely not going to say that. Alright, wait, what the hell is this? What is this place? Uh, Void Blossom and Metropolis of the Restless Souls? What is going on? Okay, I'm getting darkness as well. This is a wild place, dude. What is going on? The Void Blossom is right in the middle of this. And my Lich Bane deals damage! Oh my! Sadly, it didn't do enough damage in order to get Warden Heart, and then use that to activate the portal. Acts like a flint and steel. And well, before I knew it, this guy was all up in my face. Oh yeah, that, that's the big boy. I thought this would be an easy fight, but this guy dealt quite a bit of damage, and I got scared of him the first time. So I tried dipping, but when you run away, that laser beam dealt 7 hearts of damage to me. Remember, I'm in full metallurgium and an arcan plate. That is a lot of damage, I got about 40 armor points right now. So I tried sneaking, and that did not work either. Ate up a golden apple and I decided to go in for good. If I wasn't going to be able to kill him from afar, I was going to get up close and personal. I will take my Lich Bane and I will put it through his heart. Placing down a regeneration totem was a good idea, but I got knocked out of its reach instantly. This guy had 450 health, but my Lich Bane didn't work. And down the warden goes. And he gave me two items, which I was surprised about. It gives me a Warden Heart, or a Heart of Chaos. A Heart of the Deep? Why did I say Heart of Chaos? That's weird. I claimed another quest, and that was what I needed to make the Reinforced Echo Shards, I think it's called. Pretty much what it means is you can upgrade the drops from the Warden in order to be able to use them to upgrade tools and armor, which is awesome. If I make a full set of armor, I will get an Elytra. I would just get an elytra, I don't even have to go to the end, which is one of the things that I really wanted to do. And that endless backpack, the name of that suggests that it is infinite, which I like. That sounds like the strongest person in the mod pack, like that type of stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like that type of stuff, I want that type of stuff. I did use the heart of the deep to activate the portal, and there was uh, another warden coming for me, so I wanted to get inside that portal ASAP. Which took quite a while, actually. <laughs> the other side. Okay, 
We made it to this hellish dimension. Now I am unsure what what all lies in this dimension, so I'm gonna play it safe. I'll sneak around, I'll put away stone, I'll go back home, check out the quests, and I'll come back fully geared. So I got another warden carapace, I got the night vision goggles and experience levels. But I figured out that you need to make a warden helmet in order to see in that new dimension. So I made a reinforced echo shard. With that reinforced echo shard, you can upgrade a netherite helmet and get the warden helmet. Now the warden helmet, let me warn you guys, it looks absolutely sick. It looks menacing. So we were gonna make that a we're gonna make that right now. Look at that. Warden helmet. And I had enough levels to enchant it. So I immediately did. A couple refreshes later, I got protection four, which was big. And when I equipped that warden helmet. Yeah. Yeah, that looks cool. And it works well with the night vision goggles. Not like the metallurgian, but this actually looks good. I then made a Adamantine Ho, I think? Yeah, yeah. And I put some efficiency on it, because Mining Skulk was apparently the best way to get levels. But I felt like it really wasn't. I mean, to get level 30 it's the fastest, but not to level up in, uh, in my RPG stats. I explored this dimension a little bit, but I, there wasn't too much to see. So I just went ahead and killed a ton of extra Wardens because I needed to get so many Warden Carapaces in order to, well, make the reinforced Echo Shards. I also claimed the quest for killing 5 Wardens, which was pretty cool. And I figured out you can make a Pocket Wormhole. Now that Pocket Wormhole is a really interesting item which I like a lot. I needed to submit a Nether Star, an Abyss Watcher, and 3 Blaze Powder and I got the Wormhole. Now this wormhole lets you go to any waystone from anywhere in the world as long as you're holding that item. Which is absolutely beautiful. You always need one waystone less. I never need a waystone to go home. I can just use that item. Going to bed feeling really satisfied. I needed to work on getting all of those warden armor pieces. And the loot in this place was sick, dude. So many bottles of enchanting, so many echo, echo, yeah, crystals, and a ton of enchanted gear. The warden does chase you all over the place, but that is no problem. If you have a cloud in the bottle and you do the double jump thing, you can get away from him easy. While exploring this place in order to find some more echo crystals, I found what I needed to find badly, an amethyst cluster. Now, I did find a Silk Touch hoe in this place, so it was perfect. I could just mine the crystals with this hoe in order to activate the portal to Eden Ring. And something inside of me thought that Eden Ring was gonna be a dimension of Elden Ring, but it isn't, so I'm gonna spoil that ahead of time for you guys. I'm really sorry. I wish it was Elden Ring as well, but it isn't. Maybe at some point I'll find an Elden Ring mod pack, who knows? Maybe an idea for the future. I placed down the copper blocks, but I soon realized that a... I didn't have enough. Yeah. So I went to bed, and I smelted some more copper, and I placed down the crystals. Which did nothing. I tried looking at the quest if there was any more information, but there was nothing. So I tried lighting the portal with fire. And still nothing. So, when in doubt, consult the wiki, because that's your best friend. And it had to be waxed copper blocks. So, we needed to put some beeswax on that one. Before I did that, I got distracted, because I made another respawn rune. And we killed another Convinct device. That's the first time? No, Conjunct device. Damn. I, I thought it was the first time I said it right on the first time, you know what I mean? Anyway, I need to increase my luck if I want to say it correctly, so that's what I did. I claimed a ton of wax, and I was able to wax my blocks. My blocks, yes, my blocks. I waxed my blocks, nothing else. And I upgraded my Lich Bane with mending, as well as my other armor pieces. So we were running a full mending full mending setup, dude. Day 78. <laughs> I became time, holy shit. I placed all of the wax blocks down, and I took... 
Ooh. Um, I took a moment to enjoy that, that sight. That portal looks so good. My goodness. Okay, we were able to go inside the portal. It's good. Visit the Eden Ring Dimension. And holy... This is a sky-based dimension. Like, these are all floating Ireland. I, I, Ireland's? <laughs> these are all floating islands. And there is no way I'm gonna explore this dimension without an Elytra, man. There is just no way. I got the quest completion and I claimed another enchanted golden apple. And I went back home because, yeah, there wasn't really much to do for me in the Eden Ring dimension. I also took out some glowstone and a water bucket because that will allow me to make the portal for the Aether. And the Aether, if I remember, is Paradise Lost. This world is host to great many creatures, peoples, and places. Amidst a sea of air cloud, you may find landscapes unlike any you've ever seen before. Dungeons filled with traps and treasures, and hamlets that may make for a good, go, goodly, goody home. Goody home. That was a weird. That was a weird word. Another lunar event prevented me from sleeping, and I went on for exploration. I needed to start working towards the eyes to go to the end. And if I remember correctly from past mod packs, one of the eyes is when you find a buried treasure map and you can claim the treasure. In buried treasures, there is a black eye, but I'm not sure what the name of the eye was, but I needed to get a working treasure map, because as you saw, the last one didn't work. So this buried treasure, I was hoping was gonna work. It disappeared out of my inventory back in the chest, some weird glitches were happening. And it worked! Okay, there we go, we had a working buried treasure map. We need to go to that place ASAP. First, I killed another illusioner. And this guy... Oh, God, you got, you got bodied. Oh my goodness. Dropped the totem of illusion, though. And I got another achievement. Checking the map, I was making steady progress. But it still felt like it was far away. I pretty much explored the whole nighttime towards this buried treasure. Luckily for me, the map started showing up and I knew I was on the right track. Arriving at the buried treasure, I dug so much sand that I got sick of it, but I found the treasure. So I got an oceanic diamond and a heart of the sea. The heart of the sea is what I was interested in. Because to make this oceanic eye, you need two conduits. And how do you make a conduit? With a heart of the sea and nautilus shells. So we needed to find another buried treasure. Yeah. Well, can't have them all. We'll just start keep exploring these buried, uh, buried chips. Should be able to find one pretty easily, right? All right, got another buried treasure map, and ah, uh, it's the same map. What do you mean? What is this? It's the same goddamn map. I got scammed. Of course, you know we have to do some great water exploration, becoming an underwater Beyblade, looking for that buried treasure, and we got another map. And it's a different one, and we were close. All right, this was pretty good. I found a beach villa type of thing, and I immediately went to it, started digging around, and ooh, that's nice. Scuba mask, oceanic gold, heart of the sea. Yeah, that's exactly what we needed. And I found an ocean temple, an ocean temple, a water pyramid. Yeah, this looked pretty interesting. This might hold some good stuff. And I also figured out there is another resurrection night close by. So, you know, we have to teleport over to that village and then go to the new mausoleum, I called it. Man, I have something with naming things. Every single time I name it, I name it differently. I don't know what it is, but I'm doing it. And it's cool. Alright, so arriving at this mausoleum, I first had to look for that lost soul in order to summon our great, great boss. And I went straight for it, dude. I was ready to go ham. And this dude was ready to go ham against me. Look at that. He immediately summoned some ads, which I took care of immediately. I went straight for this guy's legs. I wanted to cripple him. 
and he was smashing his own ads. That's really strange. Okay, so he can apparently damage his own spawns. So that's kind of good. Lichbane was putting in work, dealing a solid almost 30 damage per hit. And I blasted him with some magic. But the magic didn't seem to do that much damage. So this guy has some high magic resistance, I'm pretty sure. The Whirlwind, of course, does deal a ton of damage. And it is great against the adds. And man, sometimes when I critically hit, the, oof, the Lichbane deals the damage. This guy does sometimes get resistance 3 and speed for some reason. I'm not sure how that happens. But when he has that resistance 3, man, he does not take damage. The Lich Bane with its true damage did burst through his health, though. He got low, so he summoned some other adds that were going to try to heal him, but I wasn't having none of that. The combat in this mod pack is awesome. Rolling around, shooting magic, whirlwinding. It is so cool. He was getting quite low, so I barraged him with a little bit more magic and going in with my Claymore one more time. Thought I could finish him off on this Claymore. But I just barely managed to reach the end of his health bar. He summoned some additional adds and that was the last time we would have to kill them. After taking down those last adds, I was a couple of hits away from him, biting the dust. Although that resistance 3 was putting him work for him, man. Come on. At least I didn't almost die this time, so that was a good thing. And down he went. The returning night had been finished. Round 2. So I got another Arkenstone, which is really cool. And another Nightfall. It's kind of sad you can't dual wield like two two-handed weapons. Then I found this legendary creeper which had an insane health bar. I wanted to see if I kill him if he would drop some really cool gear. But I accidentally let him go. And he dropped a ton of magic particles and some potion effects and arcane infusion 4. Hmm, weird stuff man, weird stuff. I continued exploring because I still wanted to find that water pyramid, but nighttime was setting upon me really fast. I did get stuck in some more icy biomes, and oh my goodness, man, that snow is annoying. But I didn't let it discourage me. I climbed another tower in order to find some amazing loot. And the loot was I. The loot was I. We got a bottle of enchanting. That was about the coolest thing that I found there. And we were exploring. All right, back in my trading village, I had decreased deflation. Um, well, I decreased inflation and I made it so... Yeah, I was now trading on AliExpress. A mending book was one emerald. <laughs> I put some mending on my other gear and I was looking around if I could find that structure. That night lich structure. But I was not having any luck. I did find a giant floating castle, which I thought, holy shit, this is the place. We need to go here. And scaling up was pretty easy with that double jump. But once I arrived in the structure, it appeared to be some kind of wicked dungeon? Some wicked prison? I mean, there were signs everywhere saying that I shouldn't go down there and that there was bad stuff and there were mobs. And there were traps everywhere. So I killed all of the living things inside of this dungeon. And I actually found some of the logbooks from the prisoners. I first had to deal with these skeletons. But after doing that, I found this. A six page entry of prisoners describing what happened. Oh, and look at this. Oh yeah, that's pretty satisfying, is it not? At the top of this dungeon, I found the queen's bedchambers, covered in blood, and there were some books talking about how something tragic went down there. I, I mean, I really couldn't be bothered because it wasn't the Lich King. So I dipped and then I found this dude. And this dude, yeah, this was interesting because real men, they don't kill dragons, they tame them. Oh yeah, and I was gonna tame my own dragon. I wanted to have a dragon to fly on. This guy was a prime candidate. 
So after a little bit of scurrying around and riding this, I tamed her. Look at that. We got our own dragon. Put some diamond gear on, put a saddle on, and we were off. I got my flying buddy. Look at this. It's so cool. I do have to say this dragon is big. Like really big. You, you really can't see most of your screen. And I flew around on her until the morning time. So day 82 had broken in and I saw that giant structure at the bottom. Which appeared to be a woodland snow mansion. Now sadly there isn't that much crazy stuff in these woodland mansions. There's just a couple of rooms, a couple of villagers. I wanted to farm a couple of extra totems of undying from these guys. And then I was gonna dip. So after farming up a couple of extra totems, I broke my way outside and I ran away from these guys. Because I was having none of this time wasting. We had eyes to find, we had loot to loot, and we had a night lich to kill. First I massacred this whole illager tower though. Just one whirlwind was enough to clear three levels of this place. Which is crazy. After that I claimed my soul star because I read online on the wiki that you can use soul stars in order to use them as an eye of ender to guide you towards the closest structures. Yeah, it's awesome! So I did it and I went looking for the structure. It did take me a long time because I was exploring up until night time and then I finally figured out that it was showing me backwards. So we were very close to this night lich structure. And after flying around for a little bit, I found it. Look at that tower, it is menacing. Inside of course the lag spikes, the frame rate lag spikes were killing me. And I kind of wasted one of the soul stars, so I only had one to insert in the altars. And we kind of need three more. So that's the small issue right there. Because you can only get these soul stars from undead mobs that you have a chance of looting them from. Yeah, it's quite a rare drop, you'll see that later. I also tried clearing out this water with a sponge, but with one sponge it wasn't really that efficient, so I decided to leave it alone. And I accidentally started a raid on my small village. So I killed, and I killed, I killed some more. Had to make sure the base was safe so they couldn't get inside. I killed some more. And I kept killing until morning time and for some reason there was a portal that spawned and dudes were pouring out from it and I was getting blasted with magic. What the hell is going on? I took revenge, I smited them down with my claymore and I killed some more of these things and it got a little bit crazy because a ton of magicians showed up and illusioners and illagers in full iron armor. It was getting kind of crazy. And the last wave was pretty much the strongest wave there was but I was... Man, something inside of me clicked and I felt like guts from Berserk. I was using that two-handed weapon like it was a butter knife. Slicing and dicing through these illagers. Look at these moves. Double jumping, landing on top of them with a Beyblade. Smacking them for their last hits. Boom! Look at that snipe. But the one thing that I couldn't find was this Adana, a, a the illusioner. Yudana, I couldn't find. Nowhere. So the raid wasn't concluded, and Yudana was never to be found. I also never found her or him again later in the mod pack. They just disappeared. I enchanted my warden helmet with some mending as well, and the helmet was set. We were all good to go. I made some of the extra gear because I needed to get that elytra ASAP. I want to explore as many biomes and as many, how do you say it, like as many dimensions as I want. But I need that elytra. Plus, for those who don't know, the Soul Elytra, it, you don't need rockets for it. It will randomly shoot you towards the direction you're looking. I also made that Witch Eye, and I killed a couple more phantoms during the nighttime because I needed the membranes in order to make that Warden armor. And it was nighttime, so I was killing undead mobs in the hopes of finding at least one or two of these Soul Stars. And I did! There you go, that's one of the Soul Stars. The whole rest of the night I spent killing things and I did not get any more soul stars. So this drop is incredibly rare. If you find these, save them for later, you'll need them. One more warden carapace done and I made the chest plate. And I got the quest, the skin of my enemy. 
which means that we we've gotten an elytra we got our elytra how cool is this i also then figured out there is a quest tab for the eyes of the end which are some biddable tasks to get your eyes Why did I spend all my time looking for these eyes when you can just craft them? Well, submit them. Look at this, Totems of Undying and Eyes of Ender, easy. No biggie, two hearts of the sea, easy. I don't even need to make conduits, what is this? I got two hearts, come on, have those two hearts. Submit, Eyes of Ender, submit, Guardian Eye, claim. Dude, we were moving up fast, I needed only two more eyes and we were good to go to the end yeah and my guy was looking <laughs> first it looked cool and now it's starting to look a little goofy i needed a ton of iron in order to make a ton of anvils for one of the eyes that i want to claim i think it's the cursed eye i need a netherite hammer for it and i need some iron well a lot of iron so after digging and digging and digging for iron the next day I'd already broken in and I found this goblin trader which was a perfect fit for all of that iron ore that I mined and I could just trade it in for iron. It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. I really like these guys. I needed to mine a little bit more iron and it was starting to get kind of boring mining this much iron. And I went finally home to sleep and have a rest after my two days of iron mining. It took a long time, dude. So I chucked a part of my iron into my alloy, for alloy forge and a part in my auto smelter. Now the alloy forge needed a little bit more fuel, which was no problem because I spent time taking those buckets of lava. And I went back to the nether because there was another quest we needed to complete in order to get another eye. And that was killing piglins. Now, unlucky for me, but zombified piglins they don't count so you have to find real piglins now it was time to use my elytra to find these guys and this thing was really difficult to control holy this thing will just shoot you in any direction you you go and it goes fast but it did allow me to find more piglins which was exactly what i was looking for i already gotten 10 so i needed a couple more Flying around made this quest so much easier. It did still take me a really long time to find these piglins because they don't spawn that often. I honestly thought I could do it in less than a day, like maybe 10 minutes tops, but oh my goodness, spent a whole day looking at it. I then did some more scamming on AliExpress for more mending enchantments and I increased my luck. I was starting to feel a little bit lucky. I put mending on my elytra and things were starting to look very nice. I did some overworld exploration with that elytra and I gotta say man, once you get that elytra it is such a world of difference. I needed to kill some guardians because I wanted to try to get that eye as well because this piglin adventure was not going that, that good and I did get the exotic eye after killing the guardians. So we were one step closer. I could make the cursed eye with the iron anvils and I could get the zombified piglin, no piglin eye if I need. So I submitted my anvils and my eyes of ender and I got the lost eye it is, the lost eye, the cursed eyes from the piglins. Yeah, that's right. So it looked like I had gathered all the eyes. Now for those of you who are real experienced mod pack players, yeah, that eye on the bottom right that you saw, that suspicious eye, that's not an eye from the end remastered mod. I didn't know that. <laughs> so yeah, I was still missing an eye. I did start preparing my bow for the ender dragon because I got fuse shot, void shot, I got infinity, I got power four on this bad boy and breaking. This was a good bow, dude. It was a really good bow. And yeah, eyes of ender don't work of course they don't work why would i even think they work so i needed to read up on the quest to reach the end and beat the ender dragon you will have to find 16 custom eyes and you need to have at least 12 eyes you can follow them until you reach the stronghold right so you can only use the specific eyes to act as an eye of ender that's bad news so i wanted to check which eyes i all had and i took another suspicious eye because i didn't even know it was still wrong 
And I used my Wither Eye, which completely disappeared on me. It looked like it went in the ground. And then I tried to use that suspicious Io, which did nothing. Because it is from probably Chest's mod pack. Yeah, you dummy. You stupid. The other eye also disappeared on me. I don't know what was going on. But finally, I had an eye that worked. And of course, it fucking breaks. Oh my god. I am wasting eyes here. Holy. Okay. This green eye was working. And I could claim it again. So that was good. I had a general sense of direction. And I still needed to figure out what my last eye was going to be. Because that's... Yeah, that suspicious eye was not working. So I decided to go back to the nether. After I did some exploration. And then we would claim those piglins. Oh! We did find another portal though, so you know we gotta kill this conjunctivius really quick. This time I said it right. This time I said it right. Oh yeah. My luck was at level 9, so I could pronounce the word correct. Aye. It only took me 88 days to pronounce that correctly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I did some more exploration, and flying around this elytra is good, but my computer couldn't keep up, so all the chunks weren't rendered in correctly. <laughs> I had the same problem. Oh, yeah. Gotta be careful of that. That can actually kill you if you fly into a wall too fast. I killed some more piglins, and it was finally, finally almost time to claim that quest and be done with it. I found a, I found a piglin encampment, which was my saving grace. Kill 20 piglins. We were done. We were done, dude. Cursed eye. Alright, we're going back home. Wait, what are you training? Nothing good. Subspace bubble. Use the nether to travel 7 kilometers in the overworld. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. We gotta find ourselves a stronghold. We're going to the end, boys. First, I gotta actually find that stronghold though, but with this elytra, it should not be any problem. I explored until nighttime, and that wither eye was still surviving on me. It was still surviving, dude. This eye was. This eye was a real G, man. Explored until daytime as well, and I was flying so much. Alright. We were exploring, and I found the cave. I was finally ready to go to the end. I was rushing this stronghold with the fastest possible speed that I could. And after digging down until almost the bottom Y level, I, f I found this huge stronghold structure and I knew I was in. I spy. Oh yeah, this was the base. I needed to find the central room immediately and locate that lava room. Because the lava room is where... Yeah, there it is. That's where the portal is. That's where we need to go. So I rushed over there, breaking a couple of walls, and I broke the spawner immediately because I needed to place the eyes as fast as possible, and we could go to the end. There were a couple of eyes inserted already, which gave me hope that I didn't need as many eyes. But, well, yeah. <laughs> That's not how it works. So when placing all my eyes, I needed to replace the other eyes. So I took out one of the special eyes and then right clicked on the eye vendor and that did the trick. And the portal was activated. Oh yeah, we can go to the end. But I really quickly had to stop because I had no waystone placed nowhere. So I needed to explore and find that waystone immediately because without a waystone, I was not gonna make my way back and forth to the end because we were going to be there quite a few times actually. Exploring the whole day and not finding a single, a single waystone? Man, I got me fucked up. Okay, I went back to my home base and I made two waystones, which is all that I would need actually. But I have- Oh yeah. And yeah, that, th th this is gonna be a little problem. <laughs> because in the meantime, I did some stuff. I, um, well, I already did some stuff. I killed the ender dragon. I used the egg to spawn the eye, which is somewhere up here. I mean, this thing just floated away. Hold on, let me find it. It's gotta be somewhere here. I think around Y level 300. 
He's somewhere over here. Oh, there he is! This guy keeps teleporting out of place whenever I hit him. So, he also regenerates, which is not easy to deal with. Look at that, he just teleported away. Look, there you go. There he is. He's gone again. Oh. I'd love to take this guy down, but I just don't know how. Because this aerial battle is not doing it for me. So we killed the Ender Dragon, we summoned the Eye, I killed, I think, three? No, two Obsidian Monoliths. I got the Obsidian Claymore, I got some Starite, I got the Lord Soul from the um, Ender Dragon. Um, so this is really anticlimactic. The buildup was so big, trying to find this Ender Dragon for like, I think it was four days straight or three days straight. Man. Well, I guess this sometimes happens as well. Um, anyway, we're gonna continue the adventure in the End Cities Dimension, and I wanna find the normal Elytra and see what that place has to offer. So, I'll see you there. Alright, so back in the <laughs> End Cities Dimension, um, we're just gonna continue. Day 97, and we had three days left, so I got started on getting some Aurora Crystals. And we needed to get that normal elytra. So in the first NCD, ooh, what is that whale? Oh, I want to take down that big guy. Two, three, four, four shots. Holy, that is a strong mom. Okay, so finding a oh, there you go. No, uh, uh, yeah, okay, there we go. So I need to get this normal elytra, and I want to see what I can do with it because in this mod pack you can upgrade your elytra, which sounds really cool to me. Because the normal elytra goes in your back slot, and I want something to go in a trinket slot. So the, the loot in this place is not that crazy, but the elytra looks really sick. And when you go and claim the quest for the elytra, you can see that you can upgrade it to a crystallite elytra. Oh yeah. And it goes in the cape trinket slot and gives armor, knockback resistance, and armor toughness. So this elytra is awesome. You gotta do infusions for it though. So I have to infuse some stuff into the elytra. First I claimed some extra amatrine ore that were in the floating islands on top of, well, the end cities. And I needed to find some amber, which I did. But finding amber wasn't really easy, dude. It took a long, long time. I did find some extra amber not that long after it, which was a lucky find. And I needed to make an infusion pedestal. So you need two obsidian, two ender pearls, and one eye of ender. Now to make this, I had to go home though. And after I got some obsidian out of my chest, I could make the infusion pedestal. The infusion pedestal is pretty cool. We're gonna do some rituals and we're gonna get some slabs. We're gonna make some we're gonna make some endstone pedestals. And if all goes well, we can then do some infusions. After going to the end again, I made a small hub to get everything well done pretty much. So what that means is I need to get some chests, I need to make a crafting table, then I could make the pedestals, and I placed them all down. In each corner two blocks away from your infusion pedestal you need to place the regular pedestals then you place them in all the adjacent corners and you have yourself a infusion table crafting table which is awesome I always love stuff like this and the first thing we needed to do was we need to make some enchanted or enhanced membrane enchanted membrane which is a phantom membrane and four crystal light shards aurora shards I had enough aurora shards and I placed them all inside and I took out a membrane. Oh, it's not doing anything. Oh, I placed the Aurora Crystals in the wrong spot. Ah, look at that. It is absorbing the Aurora Crystals and making enchanted membranes. So I repeated this process for four more times, and then we could infuse that elytra. Placing down your last Aurora Crystals, and look at that. Oh, it looks so sick. It's absorbing all the membrane, all the crystals, and it's taking quite a while, actually. Why does it take so long? What's going on? <laughs> Look at the Enderman, dude. <laughs> what is he doing? Oh, it worked. All right, Crystallite Elytra. Look at that. Holy. Okay. Okay. Equip my Arkham plate and put the cape onto. 
The Elytra looks so cool. Oh my goodness. And I have about 42 armor points now, which is like double the normal maximum armor you can have. So it is awesome. Okay, first I wanted to visit Eden Ring. Let's see what this place got to offer. I wanted to visit Eden Ring. I wanted to visit the Skulk Dimension. I wanted to go to the Aether. And I wanted to fight some more Titans. And we're gonna do all of that in the last couple of minutes of the video. So yeah, be prepared. In the Eden Ring, I found some Gravelite. And this ore slash crystal makes gravity work a little bit different. Which is pretty cool. You get like slowness falling, but it's not the potion effect. So I don't know how they did it, but it's really cool. And I got trapped in these Volvox blocks, which sound really weird. And the rest of the Eden Ring doesn't really have any good, anything good to offer except some new log types. So I went to bed and we went straight to the Aether. The Aether had a special feeling about it. Summoning in the world sounds really cool. And visit the Aether Dimension, we need to go higher. Look at that rainbow! Oh, that's cool! Okay, I like this place already. Oh, you get a cloud in a bottle when you go here for the first time. Dude, that is sick. If you want to rush cloud in a bottle, get some glowstone and go to the Aether. Damn. And the music in this dimension sounds pretty calming. And then I found a cave, which held some ores and some riches that I wanted to get. I was gonna raid this place ASAP. This place was mine now. It was absolutely mine. And I found some other uh, ores. These uh, oval olivide olivides. Wait, is it made? From, is it is it olive oil? <laughs> okay, I've had enough of the aether. There isn't. It says it has dungeons, but I didn't find any of those dungeons. So other side it is. Let's go and check what we can find here. There's some really weird biomes and trees in this place, dude. It looks really creepy, but really cool. Oh, and you can find iron ore in this place. What is these? Skulk veins and some geysers? Damn, dodging all of those pillars led me to eventually find these things. And they're nasty, dude. These are skulk centipedes, damn. You do not want to get attacked by these. They drop Skulk Bones, but there really isn't much you can do with that. Oh yeah, and of course Phantoms spawn here as well and they haunt you. After that, it was time. It was time. We were going to defeat the... One of the other Night Titans. And we were going to defeat the Monarch of Chaos. Now I need to make two things. A Black Tome... Black... Black Tome... Black Stone Pedestal. And I needed to get one of the drops from the Returning Knights, so the Essence of Evertide of Eventide. We needed to get that one. Then I also needed to make a different summoning table, pretty much. So I needed to make an Old Moon Altar. Now this Old Moon Altar, and you're gonna see a familiar face there. So first I made the Old Moon Altar, which required me to make another Iron Block, which was pretty easy to make. I dumped it into my crafting table, and there we go, Old Moon Altar. Now you need the Shard of Uncertainty to spawn the Old Moon, uh, the spawn the Monarch of Chaos. So the first thing I did was kill the ads that were still in this mausoleum. What is going on? Why are they still there? That is some wild stuff, dude. Got another rope, really cool. And I took the Old Moon Altar. Use the essence of Evertide onto it, and it spawned the fallen icon. This guy looks like the returning knight, man. What is going on? Alright, let me just slap him in the legs. He seemed a little bit more docile than the returning knight. Anyway, I was gonna golden apple up, I was going to take my claymore, and I was going to shred through him. Oh yeah. That is one whirlwind. Only one whirlwind deals that damage. On the second whirlwind, I absolutely annihilated him. And this guy drops the moon sword. So that is really cool. Got the blue steel achievement. And from the software itself. So it's a reference to From Software and the way that they made Bloodborne, which is pretty cool actually if you know the reference. Alright, and then it was time for the second boss. 
we were not wasting any time it was day 99 we had to rush this guy i immediately summoned the chaos, monarch of chaos blackstone pedestal shard of uncertainty and boom and i was not ready for this guy yeah that deals a lot of damage but just wait until you see what is all going to happen he spawns some levitating orbs nothing too crazy i deal a little bit of damage it's like a, a normal dance and that's when things started to become a little bit more chaotic. This guy is the Monarch of Chaos, and it is not a lie. I really had to fight for my life on with this guy. I really had to fight for my life. Yeah. Yeah, I am not kidding when I said this guy meant business. He means business. Like business with a double Z. Business. But nobody in this mod pack was strong enough to survive the bait blading action that I am. After finishing off the ads, I looted what was mine. What was rightfully mine. I got... Well, I got his crown, I got his cape, and I got the Wabajack. Now, the Wabajack is a, is a wacky item, dude. Also, the quest bugged out, and I couldn't claim the quest rewards, which was kind of sad. I then dusted out the Wabajack, and oh my goodness, it's, it's pretty funny actually. Yeah, it just teleports you to wherever you're shooting, which is really cool. I mean, come on, this is just a vanity item. And the last thing I did on these 100 days, pretty much, was I got started on my armory. I, I went to bed, and yeah, day 100 had come to a close. Day 101. Man, it's been an adventure, guys. Holy. It's it's been so sick. We survived in this world for 100 days in hardcore. We had a, a lot of close calls, actually. We did so many cool things. Yeah, it was awesome. But it was, there was one more thing that I really wanted to do. I wanted to take in what, I had, what had all happened. Like, this world is awesome. This mod pack was so much fun. I really hope that in the next mod pack I'm gonna have as much fun as I did in this one. And we have to do one more thing. The Enchanted Totem of Undying. And it's pretty good! Holy! Gives you one and a half health bars, so much absorption and all the other effects. What a journey lads. We explored different dimensions, got a ton of loot, fought so many bosses and got in some dangerous situations. Despite the bad quality, I hope you guys enjoyed this adventure as much as I did. If you made it this far into the video, which is absolutely crazy you mad lad, I hope you drop a sub and leave a like. It's what keeps the channel growing, so I would appreciate it. Go play this mod pack for yourself and tell me in the comments what happened on your journey. Elabro out. Peace.